All right. Welcome, everyone. This is absolutely crazy. Over 40 people waiting for the stream today. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Catch up on a little bit of chat here. Welcome in Benjamin Murphy, Adele, Caroline, how's it going? Steampunk Monk, you love the window video that I posted yesterday? Awesome. And Siloom over in Twitch chat. Alright, welcome everyone. Hopefully this works again to do the multi-streaming today without any tech issues and audio and video is good. Looks like, looks like it's working. <laughs> how's it going Sheesh, Morrison, AJR? All right, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing you guys can hear and see me and everything else. I've got the face cam on for at least this intro part, uh, but if it gets in the way of the gameplay, just let me know because I don't do it a lot for my games, but I figured, you know, today's kind of a chill stream. Maybe it would be, maybe it'd be fun. All right, Skullfire, how's it going? Enjoying the content? All good. Awesome. All right, cool. Well, we shall get started then. I am hoping to do a uh, location scouting stream today. And some adventures possibly, like depending on where we get, y'all can tell me all the secret rooms and other stuff I've missed <laughs> in my playthrough. And maybe we'll go back to some other locations. Um, hello from France. Awesome, welcome Emily, welcome. Alright. How's it going Ronnie and Twitch chat, welcome. Alright. Hello from Argentina. Heck yeah. Alright. So yeah, in the last video, well, I, I posted actually two videos yesterday um, of episodes and things, and one of them was the episode of Finding the Crucible for the Blacksmith, where we could uh, create this, uh, this thing here to the smelter to be able to create our copper bars, and I also posted a video on some window designs, which a bunch of you liked, so that was fun. Hello from Greece, Sweden. How's it going, everyone? Welcome. All right. Matthew, Jared, you missed me, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I've been on Twitch. I figure I'd just go ahead and start multi-streaming now when I get the chance, but uh, from the UK, awesome, awesome. Hey, Daga, how's it going? All right, I'll try to do my best to keep up on chat. Um, for, uh, for YouTube here, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, don't be, don't be, uh, too let down if I don't get to your message right away. But I'll try my best. Literally finished watching the window video. Alright, awesome. Well, I'm glad you all love that. Okay, so I also went ahead and built a magic chest, finally, and, uh, <laughs> I'm getting so many comments to empty my inventory. I, uh, I bring way too much on adventures because I've been lazy and not making chests, uh, to store my stuff, but... Alright, you've been waiting to watch this <laughs> since 4, okay. How long is the stream? I don't know. I don't know just yet. Usually I go for around two to three hours, you know, depending. Uh, but I've got lots of time today, so I'm having a fun, chill one. Um, love watching the vids. Greetings from Poland. Awesome. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? All right. So yeah, I have a couple of locations. Uh, as some of you may know from watching the playthrough, I really would love to settle down in some spots. Uh, probably one to start with I would love to do. Oh gosh, we've got a we've got a little bit of company here. All right. Hey, my better wand is uh, is doing really good job with all these level one enemies over here. <laughs> oh yeah. And yeah, Morrison, subscribe. <laughs> Welcome, Turnix. How's it going? So yeah, some of you may know I've been really wanting to settle down with like a cool hobbit house location. Doing like an awesome foresty village. And then I'm also thinking about like, maybe we find a couple locations. Two or three really cool locations. One of them I want to be for a really cool foresty hobbit house type village. One of them I would love to do like a uh, really awesome medieval style village maybe. And then I'd love to do a massive like castle fortress where it's just one giant build where we go all out. And those are kind of like three very long, you know, projects. May even take like a year or something for all of them. <laughs> so these aren't going to be like how-to videos that I'll put up daily. Uh, but we'll be kind of chipping away at some awesome builds here. So, uh, yeah. Howdy Terry, your PC can't handle it, Skullfire. 
Yeah, it takes some resources, that's for sure. Not too bad, though. I've played it on, uh, on pretty minimum requirements, and it works with, uh, with lower settings. But yeah, the environment, uh, it's, it's nice to have a graphics card where I can see the environment like this. It definitely is a pretty game. Upgrade the Blue Goblet Tavern. Yeah, that's a really nice spot. I really liked that. Your hobbit house got you trying to build inside the big rock near the starter bridge. Yeah, uh, that was... Let's see. Let's let's start making our way down there, actually. Let's see. If this wand has long enough range. There we go. Then yeah, I'll have to empty my inventory before we do too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm guessing one of these guys over here. One of these rocks over by the starter bridge. These are some cool spots for hobbit houses. They did change the terrain around a little bit from uh, the demo when I built my hobbit house. I built it right over here. Um, but yeah, they did- they also did a massive patch this morning, so a lot of new stuff with the game and terrain and bug fixes and stuff, so we'll see how it runs today. Do I know the developers? Uh, not personally, no. <laughs> uh, I've chatted with them every now and then, just from, uh, the closed beta and stuff a while back, but, uh, but yeah, we don't connect very much. Found a nice spot, unfortunately it didn't align with the build grid. Oh, no. Uh, is it worth trying to rebuild a village, uh, in-game? Yeah, I mean, that's what's- that's what's interesting, actually. That's an interesting topic about Enshrouded. There are so many pre-built structures around the map, uh, and that's something that... I think some people really love, and other people are like, Oh, there's so many structures, where do I find my own spot to build my own base? <laughs> because it is so easy and, like, tempting to just renovate all these structures. So, I think it is kind of a happy medium right now. I think a lot of people are having a lot of fun renovating old structures. Uh, you know, you can make a whole project just rebuilding uh, the starter village over here, Long Keep. Because it's pretty dilapidated and stuff, and if you get an upgraded flame altar, it pretty much covers the whole boundary of the village. And uh, you can make a really fun project out of it. I know some people were doing that a while ago. But, uh, yeah. Did you grab the legendary... Buried in the middle of the bridge pillar yet? I did not. I did not. So that will be probably in the next playthrough episode. Um, doing the- yeah, if I go to my journal, the quests. That one is the bridge construction report. This one right here. Um, that's in the Braylon Bridge. Yeah, so it's in the middle pillar there. I'll try to do it, uh, I'll try to do it next time. Um, so today I'm not going to be doing, like, lots of progression, so to speak. It'll be more like, um, just looking around for bases, stuff like that. A really chill stream. And we'll still keep the videos, uh, for, like, the progression in this live stream, as well as maybe other live streams and stuff. I'll still put them in the playlist for the playthrough, but, uh, you could still watch the playthrough videos without having to watch the live streams. Uh, and everything would still make sense and be in order, so to speak. So the live streams will probably be doing things like, um, you know, possibly taking out some of the shroud roots, uh, little stuff like that, but nothing that's big quests. So like, we're not going to go in this area with some of these quests today. Uh, that'll be in another video. Um, yeah, if you rebuild the settlement, any anywhere inside of a flame altar will not reset every time you start a server, or every 30 minutes essentially is what the new fix was today. So, yeah, that will not reset as long as it's within your flame altar boundary. But, okay. Let me... Let me go some places. So, let's scope out first a potential hobbit house location. Or, like, foresty village location. So, I'm gonna start by going to the Ancient Spire and Revelwood. Can you make glass windows? I don't think so. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure, though. And thanks for all the subs, you guys. Welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if you can make, uh, if you can make glass windows or not. I know there's lots of other arched window designs and other cool stuff. But, uh... Callscope, welcome in the Twitch chat. Searching for the perfect base as well. <laughs> nice, nice. Alright. Can you make tree houses in Revelwood? Of course you can! Yeah! So, I've noticed, like, the trees have a slight boundary. Actually, let's just let's go ahead and jump down here. I'm rested up. We'll go ahead and jump into, like, this little area of Revelwood here. And, uh, I've noticed that, uh, some of the bigger trees here, 
they have like the bounce. Oh, we gotta watch out for all this stuff here. I find that these like crab looking mushroom things are kind of passive. Unless you really get close to them and then they shoot poison at you. Um, but they're not they're not too bad. Uh, so yeah, I find that these trees, you can see that my character stops right here. Like if I try to walk into the tree. So you can't, uh, you know, you can't walk like right at the trunk. But I think if you put a flame altar down, you can still build around it. And I have seen some people do tree houses. Uh, the only thing I'm wondering is I don't know if we can replant these really big trees. That would be something I would really, really love if it's not a thing already because I didn't see a recipe for it. Uh, I think we can plant like, you know, the medium stuff, the broadleaf tree and the pine trees or whatever, the fir trees. But I don't know if we can plant these really big ones. You can build an Ewok village? <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. <laughs> you want to play in Shrouded so bad you cried the other day? <laughs> Yeah, it's a fun game. It's a really fun game. I've been thoroughly enjoying it. So yeah, I think Revelwood will be a, uh, a really fun one. And I think uh, exploring this area for a lot of fun, fun Hobbit House content would be, would be cool to sort of start off. Did I get unburied from the snowstorm yet? Yeah, when I took a day off. Uh, yeah, it's... It's funny, the weather here is all over the place. It's nice and sunny today. The roads are clear again. We've got power, obviously. It's, uh, it's all good. So, yeah. Alright. So I'm thinking for a couple of possibilities in Revelwood. We have, we have a few. So if I go back to the top of the Ancient Spire here, uh, I've got, like, two possible locations in Revelwood that I think is, uh, it would be really nice for like a foresty hobbit house village. One of which is off in the forest over here, toward the west. Uh, and yeah, if we go on our map, that is like right off in this direction. This would be like where the Blue Goblet Tavern is, um, other stuff like that. The cave passage, um, the area we found the crucible for the blacksmith. So some pretty cool locations there. The only downside here is that it's very off to the side of the map. Um, so, you know, we wouldn't be quite as central, but that doesn't really matter. A lot of people, uh, ask about that, and it's like, you have all these ancient spires and areas to fast travel in different portions of the map, and that's such a big piece of the game is the fast travel, that I really wouldn't worry about, like, picking a location right in the middle of the map to build, necessarily. Uh, so yeah, that's option number one, is like a bunch of forest over here, and we could go ahead and explore a lot of that. And option number two is over a little closer to the east over here. And it would be like this Revelwood Forest right across the Shroud here, which I think is a really beautiful location. I'm kind of leaning toward this one, but we'll explore the two, and if y'all have preferences or what you think could be really cool. Because I'm thinking this area, it's first of all, is more slightly more central. Gives us access to a lot of awesome locations to loot and keep getting building materials, every everything like that. It's also slightly below the desert, uh, like, big mesas in the desert over there, which could just be a super awesome spot to build. Uh, I'm thinking, like, you know, that mesa has a little structure on top of it, but this one right here does not. And that could be a really, really sweet spot for a big fortress build. Uh, that's kind of what I was thinking for the fortress. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think on that. But, let's see, I'll catch up on chat a little bit. Yeah, build a hobbit house with the big trees on top. Totally, totally. Renovate one of the ancient vaults. I don't think you can. So yeah, you can't build in these areas, like inside the blacksmith vault or in the ancient spires, just because it has to keep the adventure aspects there. So they don't want you like messing with the spike floors and <laughs> all that, all that sort of thing. So I don't think you can renovate the vaults, but uh, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not quite sure. And I'm just going to jump on Twitch chat here. Let's see. Um, all right. Looks like we've got spammers in the Twitch chat. Well, that that is what it is. Uh, Twitch does not have the security measures that YouTube has. <laughs> That's why I prefer streaming on YouTube. But uh, it, it's not too bad. All right. I'll have to try to set some of those in place. Building inside the mountain peak. 
with a stair to the top. That would be freaking awesome. Yeah, so the mountains, uh, one thing you guys should know, uh, is the boundary, the official boundary of early access currently. So, as you can see, if I open the map, uh, we have, like, all this map over here, and this is all future content that will be added, and the full release will be 64 square meters, or square kilometers, square meters, that would be tiny, square kilometers. Uh, but the early access right now is 24 square kilometers, so I went around the edge of the map, sort of climbing the mountains. This is one of the edges, so there's like a red boundary that shows up right here. That continues over to here, and then that kind of ends right here, and then it continues right over and across. So if we look in the distance there, you see this bridge and this like fortress and stuff across. Uh, that's where the end and the boundary is of early access, up near Pikemead's area. So you can't get to these mountains yet. Uh, those will probably be a future content addition for a really cold biome with a lot of cool stuff. So I definitely can't wait for that. But yeah, this mountain right here, that desert uh, mesa right there, I think is a pretty cool spot to build. A pretty cool spot to build a fortress. And I love that idea of doing like a fortress on the top and a full like tunnel system in that hill going all the way down to the bottom. Kind of winding around with lots of cool stuff. So, um... Didn't even realize we had a similar map planned. <laughs> yeah, or a smaller map than planned. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's small, but it only looks small when you're really high up. So, like, when you're down in it, it's actually quite big. And I think that's what a lot of people were worried about when getting the game. Was, oh gosh, the map is tiny, but that's because it's all handmade, you guys. It's got so many points of interest that there's just so much good content, um, to explore in this small area. So... Something with a mountain view, yeah, yeah. We'd have really great mountain views on the top of that on the top of that mesa over there. We'd be able to look out over those mountains if we built a massive castle, like built it really high there too. That's actually a very central point on the early access map to be able to glide down from in any direction. When we get the better enhanced uh, gliders, that could be really really cool. Yeah, you hit the boundary. Yep, yep. Never made it to a live stream before. Hey, welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's so great to have you all here. This is- this is really great. Alright. So yeah, all we have is this side of the map. I have not been to the desert yet, so we won't be climbing to the top of that mesa, uh, today. But we'll be getting close to it because, yeah, the forest that I wanted to explore was that forest right in there. That's option number one. Option number two was the forest to the west. So I think first, let's, uh, first let's go to the forest over here in the west a little bit. Uh, and explore this, kind of work our way down the map. So I have my cozy, cozy little forest cabin that I did um, a few episodes ago. So we'll go ahead and fast travel to that. Build with the bone blocks. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to figure out all, all sorts of new block pallets and things. That would be really fun. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Okay. So yeah, this is our, this is our little forest house that we built. A bit ago, and this is right on the edge of Revelwood. I've actually been using this as like my uh, clay outpost and stuff because we have all the clay right over here. That is just outside of the flame altar boundary for me to be able to mine all the time. So that's been really useful. Uh, and then yeah, we've got the got the village over here for the scavengers, which has some good loot. And then the bridge over there, which goes to the Revelwood ancient spire. But this is kind of like in the far west area of Revelwood. Uh, which I think is quite a cool spot, to be honest. Uh, and especially in this area, so like if I kind of bypass the village and head down over here, I'll we'll have to go back and sleep soon here. It's already almost sunset. <laughs> Time flies, man. This is crazy. Alright. You love the little cozy woodland house? Yeah. That was a lot of fun to build. I, I love the vibe of Revelwood. Because I was thinking of possibly doing a Hobbit Village in another location, in sort of the Meadows Hills. But I think it just has to be in Revelwood. I mean, don't you guys agree? Having all these big trees and everything else here, um, just sort of creates a really cool environment and a really cool vibe for that build, I think. Uh, but yeah, this is a really awesome hill if we kind of glide down, let's see, right in this area. Yeah, do it in Revelwood. Yeah, it's a really cool spot. Alright. 
Yeah, the old growth and stuff looks awesome. Yeah, Revelwood is great. Oh, we've got a little flower thingy over there. Okay. So yeah, we've got this nice area. We've got lots of rolling hills down here. You know, if we glide down in this area. So this is the western area of Revelwood. Which I think is really beautiful. You could even do like cascading pathways down the hill here and do hobbit houses into these little rock formations with the copper and stuff. Uh, so that could be really cool. Yeah, then we've got lots of paths and area down here. So if I just glide down here, take a quick look before nightfall. Oh gosh, okay. Caught myself before dying looking at chat when I slammed into the tree with the glider. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, doing a Shire and everything. Love the fact that I'm taking my time. Yeah, I feel like there's no rush with this game. It's just, uh, lots of fun content. Lots of great lore that I'm actually really happy I'm reading and understanding because it gives me sort of a sense of, like, how the quests are laid out. I think it's, uh, when you rush through it, it's, it's a hard game to understand without really taking your time. Oh gosh, I lingered too long. Okay. I've been loving this wand, by the way. It's, uh... Really, really nice. Oh, I don't know if I can get that honey without chopping down the tree. So yeah, this area of Revelwood, super beautiful. Lots of trees. Uh, I really like the very lost in the forest feel of, uh, of these areas. So that's something where, yeah, where I've just really loved. We've got some wild boar over here. Alright, check this out. This is how I fight these, uh, these things now. We just hold our shield up. And <laughs> the, we let the plant do part of the work, too. All right. Uh, hold our shield up and use the wand. They're they're weak to fire. They really don't like it, so that's been working out really well. All right, let's go back to the starter house. Now we kind of have a sense of this area a little bit and sleep. Because it's a lot easier to do location scouting in the daytime. And to be honest, uh, Revelwood is pretty spooky at night. It's the kind of thing that makes you want to cozy up in a hobbit house. So the environment's nice. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to do houses for the NPCs. Yeah, definitely. That'd be awesome. Do I have an open uh, server for Enshrouded? Uh, I do not currently. If I do at some point, it'll be for my uh, channel members, for the server members. And I'll be setting that up probably at some point here. I'm just waiting on a couple of quality of life updates and things for multiplayer. But uh, yeah, I've got a Valheim server and stuff up and running for uh, for the bronze members, so... And then anyone in stone membership has access to my world files for build downloads, all my Valheim stuff, and then uh, the Entrouded World here with all my builds in the future when I get some more, more out there. Hello from Denmark. Heck yeah. Welcome. All right. Yeah, I've got a Discord server. So, uh, yeah, you can just type exclamation point uh, Discord in the chat and it'll give you the link or it's in the description. So yeah, feel free to join that. Anyone who'd like to uh, chat about Enshrouded, share builds, discuss stuff, all that fun stuff. Be notified about live streams. I'll notify you all there like an hour in advance and stuff. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, the music in Enshrouded is amazing. It's really, really cool. All right, so let's go ahead and sleep here. Try to be able- it's nice that we can sleep now. I was, uh, I was a little worried about that in the demo and, and beta when we couldn't sleep, but it's nice that they added that. And it's so cool just to be able to look out the window and see it change. <laughs> yeah, the quests and NPCs are per server and not per player. Yeah. So that can be a little tough, especially the quest thing, because, you know, if you have a friend that's on for hours at a time, and then you have work every day and can't play as much, and then you log on at the end of the night and all the quests are already done, and that makes it a little difficult. So yeah, it's the kind of thing I think that can be insanely good in multiplayer. I think you just need, um, I think you just need a bit of, like, collaboration, like, play with your close friends kind of a thing. It's not just the type of, like, it's not a Rust server. It's not, it's not that game. <laughs> um... Thoughts on building a base on the top of the volcano? Uh, I'm guessing you're meaning, like, some one of these spikes in the desert. I haven't made it to the desert yet. But, uh, I've been looking at building a base on the top of one of that little, uh, mesa. Like, right straight ahead there, at the top of my top hat here. Uh, and that spot looks like a really cool spot for a base. But, very true, that's why you stop jumping 
on your friend's server. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's just the kind of game you, like, just coordinate sometimes uh, and just have a ton of fun together. Because it is super cool in multiplayer. The concept that the terrain resets if you want to just move your flame altar, if you want to all work on a build, like, the mechanics are, are there. It just needs a little bit of uh, quality of life improvements. But aside from that, it's uh, it's not bad. Just started building on that mesa. It's incredible. Awesome. All right. Well, I guess that kind of confirms that, because I would like to, uh... I would love to build up there. You walk super slow in the snow. Yeah, yeah. The mountains, the... kind of the ones you can get to are the ones above here. I just pickaxe my way up these hills, and that's how I, uh... That's how I made it across this little boundary area. <laughs> but yeah, you definitely go pretty slow. Um... Alright, so with that, now that it's daytime... Let's explore a bit of this. So this was the other possible location while we're while we're like over here that I was thinking for a possible hub house village or maybe this turns into the medieval village, maybe with some like big farm fields and things like that. Um so this is that area. I popped a flame altar down over here. Again, it has a great view of that mesa right there. And I think that would be a beautiful spot for for a castle. You could see it from like anywhere on the map. It's got beautiful views. I, I just think that's an ideal spot for uh, for a castle. So I think I'm sold on that location for sure. Uh, down the road when I make it to the desert. But this area is just a really nice area with all the rolling hills. All the all the texture and the terrain. Not many mobs, not many like, you know, planted stuff. Which is why it could lend itself really well to some beautiful farm fields. Some nice medieval builds. But I think for the Hobhouse Village, the Revelwood is just the, the, the vibe a little more. But I like the center location and sort of the high point of this big grouping of hills in the middle of the map. Do I plan to play uh, Nightingale? I currently am not. Uh, I know a lot of people ask me that. Uh, I did not get a chance to test in uh, like a beta or a demo for that game. So I'm just going to wait uh, for it to be out just a little longer. See if it's something I like because just based on trailer content what I've seen. The graphics and things just weren't quite my cup of tea, uh, and the building system and stuff. Uh, it has a really cool thing going for it with the realm cards and the procedural generation, I think, is actually really well done in that game. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of just gonna wait a bit and see what it ends up looking like. Alright. New to the game, thanks for streaming this. Heck yeah, welcome. It's your location for your main base? Yeah, yeah, that's a great spot. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of survival games in 2024. We are getting a overload, that's for sure. They're all kind of overshadowing each other too, so we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. They upped the release date of, uh, of Nightingale as well. And yeah, Christy has a video up for Nightingale. Yep, very true. I have, uh, yeah, she, she'll be covering some of it, so... Yeah, lots of options, lots of fun stuff. So far, you also prefer Enshrouded much more? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think Valheim and Enshrouded... We'll see how Enshrouded goes. It's like literally only week two, and it and it really blew up well. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Uh, you guys have been loving the content here, which is amazing. So I think this game will definitely be... Definitely be one of the long games that I work on big projects. Do a lot of fun stuff for the channel alongside Valheim. And then it just kind of depends on what we end up... Uh, kind of what we end up doing and and what games end up coming out. You know, I like Light No Fire, Under a Rock, some of these other games that might be coming out in another year or two. Um, well, we'll just have to see. And thanks for the sub, Mad Dog. Welcome. Alright. So yeah, the Mesa up there for Fortress. That's pretty locked in. And then, what do you guys think of this location for... I don't know, for a medieval village, let's say. You know, of like a classic, lots of building, uh, really fun village over here. We we also would need to like maybe have later game before we work on these projects, um, or like another update with more flame altars and stuff. We'll have to see how big they actually get when you fully max out the size. Um, but we should be okay. And then yeah, you can get up to the top of this hill, and I could obviously do a pathway through here. Uh, but on the top of that hill, you just see these rolling hills, and like it's beautiful up there. So, yeah, plenty of room up there. Yeah, it's it's a nice spot. Wasn't expecting Enshrouded to be as good as it is. Was very impressed with the initial offering quality. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very polished. It's very amazing for an early access game. I will say that from other early access games I played. It's it's really, really good. Um, and make it out of bone. <laughs> Jar, do you want me to make everything out of bone blocks? <laughs> yeah. You can do a Black Forest style village. That would be so cute. Yeah, yeah, totally. Howdy, Kongvio. Welcome. Glad I saw your chat there. Got a big stream today. Alright. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice spot for, for, like, medieval village. Nice content there. And then, yeah, we can walk around this side. You've got some areas, some rolling hills. We can kind of head down here, and you've got that bridge. That can kind of take you off into the desert. So as, like, a general central location of the map to build, I'd say if you just want, like, a simple area on the terrain, this would be it. So this was that location. And then, because I think the next thing I want to work on is going to be a Hobbit House forest type village, uh, I think I want to head over to, like, I think my favorite location, but you guys can let me know uh, for more of a Hobbit House type stuff. So, let me first head back up to the Revelwood Spire, uh, just so y'all can get a, a reference of where we are on the map to start out with and how we can get to the area. You wonder if the world will change if they add water and streams? Yeah, I don't know. Water and weather system are some of the top voted things for the devs to add. We should be getting an update on the roadmap uh, slightly later this week, uh, based on what they were saying earlier, but we'll see. We'll see. They really want player feedback, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah. So, yeah, this area over here, toward the... Yeah, southeast section. Uh, from the Revelwood Spire. This has just been striking me as a really nice spot in the Revelwood. Because it's fairly central, we've got lots of biomes on all the sides. Uh, you could glide down to it from the top of that mesa there, if we ended up doing a castle and stuff. Haven't made it to Revelwood yet? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll fly there, we'll fly there, yeah. Yeah, so Revelwood, it's it's beautiful. You know, I won't give away, like, a ton. If, if you don't want spoilers, then then click away. We're not doing quests and stuff in this one, so this will just be an environment showcase stream of finding locations. So from that perspective, uh, you won't need it, but... <laughs> the water, water has all been covered by death lava. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Swimming and fishing, I don't know if they'll add any of that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, you know, later down. They've got the well, that's the closest we have to water right now. And then, yeah, all the deathly shroud lava with the boats and things that's down there. That's pretty creepy. It's like a lot of stories and stuff that that, that sort of does. So, yeah, let me fly down to here. I'm just gonna drink a stamina so we have a little more of that. And, and I think I can make it across with my little level one glider. <laughs> If only Gandalf had a wingsuit. <laughs> he wouldn't have been stuck in the Tower of Isengard. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Sorry, stream pop-up. Heck yeah, welcome. Alright, so this is the section of Revelwood where I'm kind of leaning toward for the Hobbit Village. Oh wait, who's coming after? Oh, it's just the flower over there. You don't have legs, and I do, so I think I can- I think I can run away. Okay. Yeah, it seems to be really stable with the new patch. For me, at least. Yeah, that's- that's something I was nervous for. Because I was like, oh no, I've got a stream today and everybody was wanting it. I- I hope it- I hope it'll run well, but it seems to be doing great. Yeah. So... I think Revelwood is the best location for the main base. Yeah, yeah. It is a pretty game, Kongville. It's a very pretty game. I love the graphics. That was what really drew me to it. The graphics and the insanely good building system. So I placed a flame altar over here as a potential really cool hobbit house location for just like a single hobbit house. Again, I want to do this more of a village and stuff. But check this out. We've got like a nice hill already formed here with a beautiful flat area for some gardening and maybe your little uh, outdoor amenities. And you've got a nice big hill here. Uh, and this is kind of center, you know, in the middle of the thick forest. We've got a little castle area over there, which I haven't explored just yet. Uh, and then we've got, like, a mini village thingy over here. I think this was, like, a little lush fields area, so... And yeah, I went to this area... 
Ah, uh, when I was scoping around, so... Alright, there we go. Yeah, it's a lovely spot. Yeah, yeah. You could see a hobbit town over here. Yeah, I think it's really nice. And then, yeah, you've kind of got, like, this little village. It feels very, like, dense in the woods, but a little more central on the map. And something over here that I thought was cool... Oh, uh, let me actually just go ahead and grab a flame altar, uh, in case we find a really cool spot down here somewhere. Uh, but something I wanted to do was try to climb to the top of these hills over here. Uh, because I haven't, uh... Yeah, I kind of want to make it to the top of these hills. See what's up here, because this is where we'll be able to see, like, that big mesa in the desert biome from. Is from the top of these. Ooh, and maybe we can... Yeah, we can climb up here, and that's how we get up here. Oh, that sure looks like a way to get up here. Ooh, we've got a grave over here. Interesting. So yeah, like, this area on these hills could just be the perfect spot for a foresty village. We've got a little bit of shroud over here. We can glide down to all the thick, you know, trees and stuff down here. But then we sort of have this cliffy, sheltered feel. And I bet you we could walk right up over here. And, uh, and then be able to see, like, the desert and stuff over there. Ooh, we've got some more... More people over there, okay. Yeah, like, check this out. We've It's very walkable, yet it's very cliffy and fun. So you get a lot of fun with the glider. A lot of beautiful views. We can see the mountains, the desert uh, castle from here. If we did one over there. Should be a chest in the grave, you think? Is it part of a quest, or is it just a chest? We, we, if it's part of a quest, I won't do it yet. <laughs> Can't wait for more build videos? Yeah, yeah. Really nice spot for multiple Hobbit homes. Yeah, I think this would be a really cool spot. Yeah. The bottom right corner, right next to the farm, there's a pre-starter Hobbit town. That'd be cool. Just random loot as far as you know. Okay, well maybe we go back and check it out. Yeah, so what do you guys think? Yeah, you built your house up here overlooking the grave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice area here. Um, for sure. And I really, really like the... I don't know. So what do you guys think? In this, in this area, so this is like the more central portion of Revelwood. We've got lots of quests, lots of things to do over here. Versus over here was where we are we were last time. So like in this area by the spire. I'm I'm kind of leaning toward down in here. Um And yeah, where on the map is this? Yeah, yeah. It's it's right in right in this area as we, we just uh glided down from the Revelwood spire. But yeah, I think it'd be I think it'd be cool. And thanks, Kongville. <laughs> Be sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate that. Alright. Love the sword for dungeons in nighttime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice to be able to have the... to have the glowing sword here. They're moving the hobbits to Revelwood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. The bottom part by the broken tower? Yeah. For a lot of Hobbit stuff, and then we could even do, like, some outposts or more foresty houses, like, up in here. Even some great spots, sort of, in the- in the cliffs over here, too. Uh, cause we could do, like, a cool, like, windy tunnel that comes, again, down from there, and then up through the cliffs here. But I actually, I'm really- I'm really pleased that we can get up easily with the little grapple point over there, and then just walk up here nice and easily. I would like that. I was, uh, I haven't found that before, and I was like, oh, how am I gonna get up here easily? But, and yeah, this just wraps around the entire area. Like, look at the views and, like, go straight down into the forest here. And then, yeah, imagine, like, some hobbit houses back in this hill. And I can do a lot of terraforming to make the environment look, uh, look right. And then, yeah, we could have some hobbit houses, some, some cool stuff, like, overlooking the hill here. A nice little walking path that follows the hill, maybe with some little campfires to sit out and overlook the forest at night. That could be kind of cool. Build a house over one of the catacombs. Yeah. Yeah, and you can make grapple points and swing anchors and stuff. Yeah, totally, actually. You reminded me, I, I could build something up on the hill here and put some grapple points along the cliffside here to actually get up to it from down below there. 
That would be really cool. Okay, that kind of makes me want to build on the cliff, just to be able to do that every time I want to come back to my house. <laughs> that would be pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, even use the broken tower for the blacksmith. Really like this area? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's got a lot of potential up in here. And uh and I don't want to do hobbit houses right into the cliff. So what I'd want to do is like bring out a nice little hill uh on this side of the cliff to like dig the hobbit house into. And then the hobbit house could just extend off into the cliff for a lot of space, a lot of cool levels. I could even like do like a spiral staircase on the inside of the cliff with like windows that poke out randomly in the cliff. I could yeah, it could just be a whole crazy cool forest project. We even have a little structure over here, a little camp. Maybe we could put our flame altar down up here. Any mice? There's always mice. Alright, and we've got a bed. We can sleep the night over here and cook some food. This is cool, okay. Yeah, love the terraforming abilities they have. Totally, totally. Well, I'd be building... <laughs> start building? Everybody wants me to start building today. Uh, maybe, maybe. Or at least, you know... I think the big thing for building is I'd like to just get through a little more of the quests and adventures, just have like a nice solid lock palette unlocked, uh, just to know what I have to work with. But the Hobbit House and Forest stuff, I'm thinking will be pretty simple blocks. I actually really enjoyed the palette that I used for the Forest Cabin, where it was like the Tarred Shingle Roof block and the Flintstone block with the green in it that really matched the forest. The Shire of Moria, <laughs> yeah. Hobbit houses that could go into big mines. Yeah, totally, that could be fun. Yeah. It's <laughs> just a slight mouse issue there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fix a ruin and have a hobbit house close to it. Yeah, so many cool ideas. Yeah, this is a pretty cool spot, actually, right here. Like, this could sort of be the central courtyard area, maybe, of the village. I could try to make it so the flame altar doesn't cover these trees so that they could be harvested and grow back. And then we've got lots of nice gentle hills in this area. We can come up the the cliffside here, kind of wind up around. And again, I can make this all like nice gradual paths and things. Can come out over to the edge here and again overlook the, the castle right there, the mountain view off in the distance. <laughs> Add some bone blocks to that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> You'll be lurking, Kong. Veal work is getting in the way of the fun. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Thanks for stopping by. And Kong Veal and I are doing a Return to Moria uh, multiplayer series as well. And I think, um, Kong Veal, if you are still watching, I'll message you in Discord too. But um, I think I will do that series, continue it just over on Twitch. Um, since we're growing crazy big here on YouTube with all the Enshrouded stuff and kind of on a roll with this. Uh, we started a Moria playthrough a while ago, uh, him and I. And so, for any of you that would like to see that, uh, yeah, head over to Twitch and give it a follow and you'll be notified over there. We can have a nice tight little group and, uh, do some fun Moria every now and then when, uh, I'm not doing Enshrouded just for some multiplayer live streams. Um. The cliffside would work for a normal house village too. Totally, totally. Like, imagine lots of houses and things up on the cliff here, and then being able to glide down to the to the village. We've Again, yeah, a little bit of shroud, a little bit of everything here. We've got a good view of the ancient spire, a beautiful spot for farm fields. We could try to renovate this old ruin area down here. Um, sounds good, didn't know you were on Twitch. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of just started multi-streaming there as well, because I figured I may as well try it, and it worked, so... Figured I'd do that. You tried Moria and did not like it? Yeah. So, one thing I will say to Kongville, you know, I won't give anything away, because I finished my solo playthrough of the game, uh, with the video series, and Kongville and I are still doing our, our multi-playthrough. Um, but it does get really buggy toward the end, and I didn't think it was very polished, so... It's fun, but it's just like, now having me knowing how it's going to work in the end will really help our multiplayer series, I think. So that when we get stuck on things, I can, uh, I can, uh, help Kongvi on stuff and we can try to figure it out. But yeah, it gets really buggy and weird toward the end. The procedural generation is all over the place. It's, uh, not quite finished, in my opinion. <laughs> the concept is cool, um, but it, yeah, it had some issues, that's for sure. 
Hope there will be a first person view in the future. Yeah. Yeah, that could be cool. Just to be able to toggle through it. I mean, it's nice that you can at least still zoom in and out of your character. I, I love that feature. That's really nice. Uh, like an alpine village type thing. Yeah, that'd be super cool. For sure. And I love how we have like a few different cliff options. Like we can go down here. We've got this little area. And I could totally terraform like a really neat windy path. Some cliff houses maybe. Cliff dwellings on the side there. So, uh, yeah. Nice, Kongville, you, you found me over on Twitch. Okay, good. And hopefully the stream quality is decent there too. It's very... Uh, YouTube will always be the better stream quality, uh, just because of all their options for better encoding and everything. So, uh, for, for all, all the main stuff, Valheim and Shrouded, I'll still be over on YouTube, uh, as well as Twitch, but... Yeah, for some stuff I might go on Twitch every now and then. Looks decent on your phone at least. Cool, okay, okay. And yeah, Z plus scroll wheel is the zooming in and out. I'm glad I found that. You could also use the up and down key. Or, someone was saying that, uh, doesn't look like it's working for me right now. Um, or page up and page down. Yeah, page up and page down. But it's not as fluid as the, uh, Z and scroll wheel. But, uh, yeah. Love your build guides and tip videos. Well, thanks. Thanks, Daniel. I appreciate it. A bridge house would be cool. Yeah, that could be really neat. Yeah, there's so many options, and one of the things I was also getting some comments on was, uh, what if I did a, like, a lot of people are like, could you make a flying, not a flying, but like a floating base? Because in this game, there's no gravity, there's no mechanics like Valheim, so to really utilize the building system, I have really been inspired by, like, the floating islands and Avatar and things like that. And what I was thinking is, for the foresty village area here, maybe even off of the desert mesa over there, but, like, on the top of these cliffs and stuff, like, couldn't it be really cool to build, like, floating islands with bridges connecting them, like, going off of these cliffs throughout the forest with, uh, little houses and things on them? Um, I don't know. It could be really neat to sort of integrate that in some way and make a really cool... I don't know. I'd have to figure out how to make floating islands and make them look really good, but I think I could figure it out. And, uh, I think that could be cool. Cool to try. Um, someone made a floating island base, used some of the blue glowy blocks to make water. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Back to the Ewok village idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Floating over the shroud. Ooh, like you're avoiding it. Totally. Oh, that's a really good idea because you can't build in the shroud, but you can build right above it. I like that a lot, actually, because we've got shroud right over here. So, like, just assuming we're using this location, for example, as, like, the main spot. In this general area, I'll obviously have to kind of narrow down, and that's what we can do today once we pick some ideal locations, is start narrowing down so you guys have a sense of, like, what future building stuff is to come. But yeah, if we kind of head down here, um, you know, we've got this cliff, but maybe we build a path to the top of that one, and we can sort of hover over. We've got a little bit of shroud down here. We've got some shroud in between this and the desert over on the other side. That could be really cool, actually. Sort of make the shroud portion of it uh, off to the other side, so like the floating islands feel like this separate, really cool phenomena or whatever. <laughs> the city in Narrowind that floated over the Vivic City. Yeah, that could be cool. Uh, floating Castle, a remake, Nigrand from Outland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be really neat, actually, if I did something like that. I just want to see out of curiosity, now that we've made it all the way down, uh, how easy is it to, to quickly get back up again if we use this little village for reference. So yeah, we've got some shroud over there. Oh, uh, no, this, this area is lush pasture. I want to see, just out of curiosity, if there's any... There's lots of this luminous growth in the shroud here. Which is great. So this would be a cool location, because we're right by the luminous growth to be able to harvest it for the glowing blocks and stuff. And then yeah, nice farm fields over here. We already have some farm soil. Which is really great. We actually have a passage over there. I'm gonna save that for an episode, in case that's some, some good lore and stuff. Floating city from Castle in the Sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that would be that would be really cool. So if we're over by the village here, didn't we go this way? And this was where the, the little grappling hook was. It's also cool because we have a bridge right over it, like a terrain bridge that like tunnels right over this path. And I think that just looks super cool. If I kind of refined a lot of the terraforming up there, I think this would uh, this would actually be really neat. So yeah, this is the area. This is the area that we can get up up there really easily. So that's good to know. In terms of reference to the village, we just kind of follow the hillside and... Yeah, fix that ruined village. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, you can build so much in here. It's, it's a lot of fun. So what's in this cave? I have never been in here before. Is this like a full-on cave? It is! That is really cool, with a lot of these plant-looking things that I cannot block. Oh, golly. And I turn into a Last of Us character. Alright. Yeah, I won't go into the cave just yet. <laughs> but that's cool, to know that that location is there, uh, if we wanted it. So, and then, yeah, we can just kind of wind up the other side. Oh no, not another plant. Ah. Uh... Oh no, I'm not gonna make it. Oh, just barely. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> could be a floating hobbit house. Yeah, that could be interesting. Some floaty, like, forest-type houses. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, floating island with a house and all. That'd be really neat. Alright, so you were saying there was stuff in this grave. Um... Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go the lazy route here. Do I have any more explosives? I have nine more. Uh, that'll do. Anything in there? I think I see a chest. It's a legendary chest, just like you said. Scorching wand. Another scorching wand. Nice. Okay. So what is that? That's an, uh... The one I had was 35 damage as an epic. This is 26 damage as an epic. So this is basically the same one that I had. So that's a really good chest then, because that's still the one I'm using. Salvage for 76 runes. Now I can upgrade something again. Well, thanks for that. That's good to know that there's just stuff everywhere that we can find. <laughs> the grave site from someone who didn't have the stamina to get up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So many cool ideas. In one hour, your brain is exploding. Yeah, there's there's so much stuff here. I feel like that's why I wanted to do a stream on scoping out some locations. I know there won't be a ton of building today, but uh, you guys just all had so many cool ideas in the comments and things. I've got lots of ideas from all the episodes I've been doing, and I figured it'd just be really cool to to sort of settle down and, and start thinking about a really nice like long term project area. Um. And that also, how do you find all your inspiration from, uh, for all your builds? That's a good question. Um, kind of just my imagination, to be honest. Uh, so what I try to do is I'll, I'll, you know, enjoy the building. Sometimes when I have the build already, like, done in its first stage, I'll just look around at Reddit and stuff sometimes, see what the community is doing, find little tricks and things, and then go back to the build and sort of revamp it, and that way I really like the originality and, and sort of keeps challenging my creativity. Um, I also am a contractor and do home remodels and excavation stuff as my day job. And uh, and so that certainly is, it kind of helps to, <laughs> to sort of just know some of the concepts in the real world and then uh, be able to sort of easily apply them uh, to the games when they have a really good building system like this for shaping the terrain and everything. All right, yeah, see this is scary and spooky. We just chill over here at night if I turn the game sounds up. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Do you know if you're going to get a path block to connect the homes within the village? Yeah, there's lots of path blocks. The stone path, the dirt path, uh... I don't even know all the, all the options. I think those are two main ones. At least those are, like, what I've found, but... Um... But yeah. Not as much of a builder yourself, but building games are awesome to you. Yeah. Add to a ruin. Yeah, totally. Go back to my glowing sword. Yeah, the game sounds at night are just so spooky. Like, this is the kind of thing, if they ever did add a weather system and stuff, it would totally be the vibe in here to uh, curl up in your hobbit house. And with the new patch, they also added uh, some fog, some more fog in the 
Revelwood Forest here, so we get some more ground fog here. I think they still have to fix a lot of the fog showing up in the houses. It's not too bad, but it can definitely show up there, especially if you have your graphic settings turned down a little bit. Um, but yeah. And hey, Christy, how's it going? We we're just talking about you with the video uh, that you did for uh, Nightingale. A lot of people are looking forward to that. We'll see. We'll see how it is. More fun than building with CAD and Blender. <laughs> Yeah, it is fun when you can just see the results directly and uh, manipulate it in real time here. It's like, as a kid, I also enjoyed things, you know, like Legos and my first game was Minecraft and stuff like that. I've just always enjoyed the concept of just building. Even if I just wreck it down and start again or move or all the stuff like that, it's like just the fun process, you know, the, the classic saying of enjoy the process rather than the end result. And uh, just through that practice, it gets you, you know, more used to it, it gets, gets it interesting. Um, you must have summoned you here. Yeah, yeah, Christy. <laughs> you heard the call. Alright. Yeah, you keep hearing a rooster in-game, but you don't see one. Uh, I don't know if they have one in-game. I haven't seen one either, to be honest. Um, ever play Rising World? I have not. I have not. Your buddy found my Minecraft videos? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got another one on Twitch. Just wanted to say thanks for all the videos. Got the game because of you. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. So excited to see what y'all do with building. Yeah, this game is so much fun for building. It's uh, It's got so much potential. Yeah, some of my very first videos on YouTube were from Minecraft. I did some Minecraft and uh, fairly quickly switched to Valheim because I really love the community there. More mature nice people, and, uh, and this game was just right up the alley. This is the next one I've been doing, and, and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, the sound effect to let us know when it's morning. Yep, that's what it is. That's what it is. Maybe turn the Blue Goblet Tavern into a mansion. <laughs> it feels like it already is a mansion. Those structures can be really, really big. Rising World has very interesting building dynamics. That's cool. That's cool. Valheim has an amazing community, so supportive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's just- these, these games just really do have a nice community. That was something in Enshrouded, you know, the reason I did it right when it launched was because I had a chance to play in the closed beta for a lot in the demo. I had like 60 hours from the demo in closed beta. I had just loved it, got a chance to connect with the devs a little bit, and, uh, and that's how I knew it was like, yeah, this is something I want to jump on right when it comes out, uh, rather than waiting a bit, just because I- I kind of had that experience to know that it was it was a really good game that I would enjoy. Playing on Steam Deck, so your graphics settings are on the way down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Steam Deck is the absolute minimum requirements, because I think Steam Deck has four gigabytes of a uh, video RAM. Did I place a flame altar over here? I don't think I did yet. I'm just going to go ahead and throw one down so I can teleport here in the day. We'll go ahead and sleep now that you all have heard some of the foresty sounds. <laughs> it is kind of peaceful, though, up on the hills here where nothing can get us. It's kind of nice. Um, yeah, a lot of you are from the Valheim community. Yeah, totally. Totally. I think this game, uh, a lot of you had really good response to Enshrouded when I kind of introduced it, so that was something I was also looking for. Like, you know, I'll still do some Valheim on this channel uh, and start alternating, you know, videos and stuff every now and then. Uh, just decided to do a lot of, a lot of posts for Enshrouded at the launch. Um, which I think was great. We've really grown the community. Uh, you all are some awesome people. It's been so much fun. And I can't believe we're already, like, on the road to 10k subs at some point. <laughs> I mean, maybe we could hit that, like, next month. That would be so cool. Um, yeah. I, I never thought that I'd be growing like that. Valheim and Small World? Yeah. Get rid of the unused altars. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, we've got, yeah, we've got the one here for the starter house, the one up there for, like, a medieval house, but we're not using it just yet. Maybe I'll keep it there for some of these quests, I don't know. But yeah, we have decided, so that's my other house. We like this one. So let me go back to the one at the bottom here. Doing great. Thanks, Christy. Thank you so much. All right. 
know when they will download more content. I don't know. We don't know their entire roadmap just yet. Um, but they'll probably be updating us on that pretty soon. Waiting for Under a Rock. Yeah, Under a Rock is on my radar. That one looks really cool. It's it's just like a fun, feel-good, tropical island vibe game. Lots of great building. Really cool uh, stylized graphics and lots of water. Really cool AI creature system and stuff. I think that one will be kind of fun. Um, the Beastmaster skills. Yeah, you can explore without the wild animals attacking you. They'll actually help you and stuff. Yeah. And the skill tree in uh, in this direction for Beastmaster. So I've just gone in the survivor direction. Uh, you guys could give me give me uh, suggestions throughout the series if uh, if I'm like dying a lot to something and you think another skill would help. But I'm also saving up for this uh, updraft for the glider. Uh, kind of going in this assassin direction as well a little bit. Sneak attack, uh, airborne with a little less stamina for the gliders, uh, stuff like that. But. It, Beastmaster actually works on spiders. That might be a game changer for a lot of people who I know are uh, pretty freaked out about the spiders. Spiders, rats, bees, wolves. That's awesome. I'll have to I'll have to reply to comments then asking about that because yeah, the spiders spiders were kind of creepy. <laughs> it was funny in the in the big uh, in the day a couple days ago when I got the snowstorm and my power went out. I was trying to record the episode. Right, and uh, thankfully I had my OBS settings on fragmented MP4, so all my recordings weren't lost and stuff when the power went out. But it suddenly went out like twice, and then it just stayed out for the rest of the day. But when it went out twice, it uh, it happened right when I was getting the hunter's hand spindle in the big cave with all the spiders. So I'd kill all the spiders and start walking up to the hunter's hand spindle, and the power cut out. And then it came back on, and of course, you know, the, the save was you know lost, so I started back from my house. Went all the way back over to the spider place, <laughs> fought all the spiders, and it went out again. And I was like, okay, I'm done. No more spiders today. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and then I finally, finally, uh, got up the nerve to finish the episode and get the spiders the next day when the power came back on. But that was funny. <laughs> There's a gold chest there. Shroud beetles will still attack you? Yeah, some of the shroud stuff will still attack you, I'd imagine. Is there a gold chest somewhere? Where is it? Wait, was I walking by something? Always love the legendary stuff. So yeah, this was that first flame altar, which I think is a cool forest, but it feels limited. Uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? Because this is a really neat spot for a hobbit house if you wanted like a single hobbit house design. So before I destroy this altar, I'll just go ahead and show uh, those of you who are interested on the map. It's like right, you know, right across from the ancient spire, right across the shroud, right over here. Um, and I think it's just, it's a really cool spot for a single hobbit house. I just think it feels limiting based on like the surrounding terrain is just very flat. Uh, great for farming. Like I think we could have our farms down here, but I think if we just go ahead and extinguish this one. Um... And then fast travel to... oops. Zoomed out of the map too quick. Okay. Fast travel back to this one over here. You could lose all that clay. Yeah, that's true actually too. There's a lot of good clay down there that I could mine without having a flame altar down there. That will regenerate and stuff. But, uh... Yeah, I think... Up here is a really nice spot, all things considered. Just with the terrain shape, a lot of nice hilliness, a lot of potential for lots of great forest builds. You've even got a big, uh, you've got a big area over here. I wonder what, can I make it up here? Actually, I think I can. You just gotta like double jump and then instantly glide. There we go. Got to it. Yeah, nice views, and we could obviously make that a much more gradual pathway. But we can get all the way up here, get some cool views, do a little house up here. There's just lots of cool terrain areas that I think have a lot of potential in this area. So, I think for the Hobbit House foresty project, I don't know what I'll call it yet, maybe just Project Forest. <laughs> um, yeah, for Project Forest, I think this location is pretty ideal. Uh, what do you guys think? Like, within, you know, once we kind of pick a location, we can now start narrowing it down within this location. 
and uh, pick like where where I should do the first house kind of a thing. And then maybe we could start terraforming a little today. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. A single hobbit house would grow way more food than he needs. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't need all of it. It's it's just about having fun with the big building projects for sure. You can dig really deep in the ground. Yeah, I have some. Feel free to go to the shorts section of my channel. I've got a short for the enshrouded dig limit. Maybe they've modified it a little bit for early access, but uh, it's very very deep. Um. <laughs> yeah, you now start building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice and sunny, too. Yeah. Oh, the colliders around the trees stuck. If you build up high, they can be several meters away from the trunk. Yeah, yeah, I did see that based on the bottom of the trunk. Okay, well, that's good to know. So, yeah, for building tree houses, you just have to build around the perimeter a little bit more. And, uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't quite mesh as well. One thing I could do, though is build my own tree. That's something I am thinking about. I don't know what I'd use right off the bat for leaf blocks. I could use like the garden soil. I could use the, or like the flower garden soil. I could use just dirt with the grass on it. I don't know how that would look. I could just use farm soil and plant little shrubs on it. That might actually work. But what I was thinking is because of the terrain, uh, the fact that the terrain kind of just meshes together nicely, I could build a massive tree trunk and branches with terrain blocks. Um, and then what could be really cool about that is that, yeah, then on those branches I could put little specks of farm soil and plant little shrubs to create leaves and create my own, like, huge tree, maybe on the top of this hill that overlooks the Hobbit House Village. <laughs> uh, it's just a thought, you know, way later, way later down the road kind of a thing. Um, but yeah. Maybe make a wizard tower? Yeah, that could be really cool. Alright, so I'm pretty- I'm pretty sold on this location then. Ooh, we've got another little forest beat right there. And then yeah, this has like a nice forest area, a nice flat forest area is- is a cool spot. So I'm thinking up on that hill is- is my ideal area. Uh, maybe it would be worth climbing this hill as well, just to- just to check it out. If there's an easy way to get up there. We could dig ourselves a little pickaxe way up there. Yeah, over here for a hobbit house village, and then across on that big desert mesa. Right up there for a big castle later game. That'd be really nice. Okay, let's see. Any easy way to get up here? I'm debating if I want to pickaxe up this side. Or if I want to go... Hmm. If I want to get to the top from the other side. What hat is that? That is the wizard's hat. Yeah, it was one... You can't make it. I found it in the chest over at... Uh, where was it? Over at Willow Crush, this town right over here. Um, And then, yeah, if I go into the... It's got 15 physical resistance, 23 magical, 19% critical strike damage, so it's actually pretty decent. Uh, my character's looking kind of western right now, but, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a cool, it's a cool look. Um, move the altar there, yeah, big exit, okay, okay. If you're going to build your own tree, you can, uh... Gretok the build, like, in the Elder Scrolls? Oh, maybe. Yeah, I think building my own tree could really- it could really work if I- if I was able to do it right. Okay, so I'm thinking to try to get up there. Let's, uh, let's get to the pickaxe. The explosives are the quickest way to do this, but I don't have many of them. I've got enough stone and another flame altar to be able to craft if we want to switch the flame altar to be on the top of this hill at some point, but we'll see. It's like a witch's hat, but cropped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, grot oak. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think we'll be getting kind of close. This is how I go up usually. It's easier to kind of just dig like a little tunnel. 
at like a 45 degree angle. And eventually we hit daylight at the top of the hill. If my stamina cooperates. <laughs> a medieval cowboy? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, I'm seeing some daylight over there. Okay. Yep, there it is. Does that put us up at the top of the hill? Almost, okay. Well, we made it most of the way. And then, let's see, I don't want to fall right now. If I fall, I can, guess I can get back up again, but... Let's see, maybe we go up this way here. Or vampire hunter, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hollow in to a mountain for a hobbit castle. Yeah, so many crazy ideas. <laughs> My mind will go spinning if I like, if I try to keep up with that. There's, there's just so much, uh, so much stuff you could do in this game. Okay, can I get up there with a double jump? I feel like I can. If I, oops, crap. Okay, there we go. Be a little bit careful here. Okay. There we go. Get up here. And then, oops. Right there, and then... There we go, we're up. Okay. You're gonna use some graph paper? Map out your base? <laughs> yeah. Are foundation blocks 2x2 two two or 4x4? Four four? Uh, so 2x2, two two, you know, there's a few, but yeah, the, the main foundation blocks we need a flame altar nearby. Maybe I'll go ahead and place a flame altar on the very top of this hill. May as well. We have one right now. I can always destroy it. Um, so yeah, the foundation blocks are, uh, they're right here. So, four by four. Uh, if you want to, like, look at it that way. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're the large ones. But yeah, they also have the two meter foundation. So, you know, you could, uh, depending. But yeah, the, the main foundation blocks, I guess I'd say, are the, are the bigger ones. The flame altar size here. Now, this is a really cool vantage point here. Lots of cool stuff up on the top. I love how much we can see how tall it is, but like this is the this is the mountain peak where I could have some floating islands like go off in that direction or off in this direction maybe. Uh, that could just be really cool. We've got another plant over there. Where on the map am I right now? I am right, uh, right in this area, in the lower Revelwood from the ancient spire up here. Yeah, you can repair, you can repair the tools, yep. I don't know if when your friend does quests, if it messes with your XP and rewards and things, it might. Um... I know it shows up with the locations and everything for you, so... Yeah, building huge bases in Minecraft, but now having the blocks be like a quarter of the size of what they are in Minecraft, it just allows for a little more creative freedom than in Minecraft. Can you move an altar, or do you have to destroy it? Level 4 altar... Yeah, so unfortunately you do have to start all over again. Um, if your altar is upgraded, the flame level, so like when you strengthen the flame, um, it will basically, uh, maintain the flame level, but yeah, the altar level, you do have to start over when you move it, so yeah. Maybe they'll fix that at some point, I know a lot of people have been mentioning that. XP goes up to you as well, if you're, if you're nearby. Okay, that's good to know, Christy. And thanks for the subs, I appreciate it. Yeah, Minecraft has a tiny block mod. They do. They do. I haven't used it, but, uh... But I reckon that would be pretty cool. So this is really neat. We've got a whole, uh... Like, ridge line up here. Sort of like forest mountains. So, yeah, I'm pretty sold on this location. And I think, honestly, for, like, the forest village... I'll keep the flame altar up here. So we can, uh... We can maybe even just destroy the one that's down there. But I think for the main... Hobbit area, uh, I'm kind of leaning toward right down in here. If I, uh, let's see. Like, off the cliffside? I don't know, maybe in this area right here? 
This just kind of feels like it could be some really cool Hobbit homes, or maybe on the side of the hill over here. I'm still debating. We're narrowing it down. <laughs> I'm. You, you all know me, I'm the type to like really want to pick a cool location, because I know I'm going to be building there for a long time. So, uh, so don't mind if I take my time, like, really wanting to, really wanting to find a cool spot. Um. But in this general location up here, I think right along this cliff edge is, is my, is my general spot. Um. But I'm thinking Hobbit House-wise, possibly in a hill, like, over in here, like, if I build this cliff out as a hillside. And I could even have a couple Hobbit Houses, like, uh, I don't know. I could have a Hobbit House here in this cliffside, I could even have one, like, that goes back over here. In, like, a hill that I build out, and we could just have a few of them along the edge of the cliff here. And then this is, like, the little path that kind of connects the Hobbit Houses. And we could start with whatever Hobbit House feels like a good central spot. I don't know, what do you guys think of that? Hobbit houses here, or other houses here? I might also do other houses as part of this forest project, like a house for each NPC kind of a thing. A good blacksmith, a good, uh... Farmer area, maybe down the hill over there. What's the structure by me? Uh, that- there's a castle off of the distance, I'm not sure what that is. And then the one down here is Lush Pastures, is what it's called. Uh, and that's- I'm thinking that could be a cool spot to do a farm location. Yeah, I'm not sure- I'm not sure what the castle one is off in the distance. I haven't gone there just yet, because that'll be- probably be part of the playthrough. Is, uh, is what I'm guessing. So, yeah. And yeah, I will do two, uh, so yeah, other houses and things, but like this area over here, this area gets a little flatter. Uh, which could make for a nice, like a nice, more spread out village on the hill. So maybe this area lends itself to the houses. Uh, like the alchemist, like an alchemist tower. Um, yeah, and the blacksmith and everything. And then maybe the hillside over here. I'm either debating over here or over there, but I'm thinking over here. And then this could be the Hobbit House location areas. Like I could do one right into the hill up here. And then them into the into the hill here. And they could all somehow connect to each other within this cliff. To have like little uh, tunnels and windy pathways within this big rock formation that's back here. Um, I don't know. I think that could be really cool. I think- I think I'm getting- getting there now. You guys can see my building process. You can see how long it takes me to, like, debate about stuff before I record videos and episodes. <laughs> it takes a while. Um... Yeah, you can remove broken walls when you renovate ruins. Yeah, you can. Use the bottom for the NPC houses, more room. That's a good point. Right down on the bottom of the cliff, and then maybe do the forest hobbit house section up here. That's a good point, because th this could be like the village. Uh, for the NPCs and stuff down here, with the farming and stuff like that. And then this could be like the cozy little corner up here, with the high ground that overlooks the village. Uh, that's kind of hidden, like you wouldn't know it's here from down below, until you come up the hill. That could be kind of neat. Yeah, like an anthill, exactly, exactly. Um... What is the small structure on the cliff? Oh, on the- this- this one right over here, yeah, that's just a little camp. This is just a little spot with some mice and a fireplace. Uh, and a bed. So, just a little- just a little pre-built structure. And what staff is that? This is the root staff. So, this come- this is the legendary root staff. It is fully maxed out for 35 power, and I've been- I mean, it's the best one I have. Similar to, like, the Spiritual Cane, a Shepherd's Lightning, uh, staves like that. And then I just have the Infinite Ice Bolt, or the Eternal Ice Bolt spell. Is- is my main one there. Some fireballs here that are equipped just to use them up. Uh, but yeah, this one seems to be pretty good. Yeah. Make a cliffside base with access by a grappling hook? Totally, totally. Blink is good. Yeah, I've heard that one. I should get my skills in that direction a little bit. And hello from Russia. Welcome, welcome. 
Yeah, and I could even build this hillside or this cliff area out just a little bit on the perimeter if I wanted like a more, a bigger yard in front of the hobbit houses. But honestly, I'm really, I'm liking this area a lot for that, so. Alright, you guys, where should the first hobbit house go? I, I feel like a hobbit house is the first build I gotta do as like a really big, nice build. I should also talk about like, uh, the structure of the builds here. Uh, it looks like you all are really enjoying the live streams. Um, so I've got a couple ideas. We could, um, for these builds, you know, for like Project Forest, let's say. I could do these as separate building videos or streams. And I'd still put them in the playlist of the playthrough, but they would sort of be like a standalone build video or series of streams and things. Um, so that's something I was thinking. Uh, do you guys have a preference on wanting to see like the full uncut? I know a lot of you really like the uncut building, uh, where I'm not trying to uh, like, you know, I don't know, cut through all the sections of me like speeding up stuff and so you guys can follow along a little easier, but for bigger builds like this, I feel like the only way to really do that in a good way would be for live streams. So you can see the process, we can kind of talk about it, change some things, stuff like that, and then maybe when the build nears completion, I turn that into a video, like a full video of the tour and the end result. You prefer the uncut videos? Yeah. And it's a hobbit hole! Yeah, you know. <laughs> and yeah, hobbit houses are awesome. Yeah, hobbit holes, hobbit houses. Yeah. We're on the map and I, another map uh, reference. We're right down here. Right down here um, from the Revelwood Ancient Spire. So just glide across the shroud, you'll hit this forest. And uh, yep, there's the Revelwood Ancient Spire. So, uncut building is better. Okay, okay. Exploring the same spot yesterday and thinking about building a big base here. Yeah, yeah. This is a nice spot, I think. You'd like that? You enjoy the building process in most of these types of games. Uncut building is better. Okay, yeah. You prefer on livestream. Okay. On the pinnacles of creation. I have not climbed to the top of those. Is that is that what the desert mesa is uh, over on the other side here? Because I want to build a castle up there. That is definitely on the agenda at some point. I'd like to build a massive castle, like one big build that we just go all out on. Oops, I'm stuck in between the meshes of the tree. <laughs> That's what happened to me when I was building my other house. Yeah, those uh, those are what these big pillars are over here. There's, yeah, that would be a cool spot. Try to do Bag End Bilbo's home. That would be cool. Stream build. And a shorter cut video when building is complete. Sounds good to you. Okay. Yeah, that's the pillars. Okay, awesome. Then yeah. The the pillars of creation. That's where we want to do the big castle. <laughs> At some point. I have not made it to the desert yet. But uh, yeah, I'd love to do a big castle up there. Build an epic treehouse. I, I would love to do that as part of the... As part of the... Uh, forest village. That would be really cool. Just pickaxe to the top of those yesterday took a while. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably pickaxe to the top slowly, put a flame altar down up there, and that'll be sort of the start for building. But, uh, well, with that, I think that pretty much, that pretty much says that. You guys would like the live streams for building, so I can just title them, you know, working more on Project Forest for the Hobbit House or whatever I'm ended up doing, a tree house, all sorts of stuff like that. And then as the build nears completion, I sort of maybe take clips from the live streams. Uh, so maybe I record them while I stream as well and just kind of save some clips here and there for the main building process or uh, or just do like a fun final result of the full tour of the build as like its own video. Um, but then do the process through live streams if that's what you guys like. Because I'm, I'm totally down for that. Uh, because it, yeah, with the smaller builds, things like the little forest cabin I did, I'll still do some build videos like those, because those are easier to kind of fit into one video that's like under an hour or something. Um, but yeah, I think for the for the Hobbit House stuff and these big forest projects, the big castle, things like that, that are a lot uh, larger, it would probably make sense to do live streams if that's enjoyable uh, for y'all. Sounds really good. Okay, okay. Yeah, the grenades definitely go a bit faster than the pickaxing, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
No time-lapse video can't stand those. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, I can't stand those either, unless it's like from a third-person perspective with like a build camera, because it drives my eyes nuts when I have to like do those time-lapses. I'll, I'll like have little sections that are time-lapses if I'm like looking in the same direction, but especially if I'm like looking everywhere, it just makes me dizzy. So I'll try to, uh... I'll try to, I'll try to keep that in mind, yeah. Full tour at the end? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, you like the live streams to see the ideas flow as I go? Awesome. Alright, so I think that'll be the format then for this kind of a thing. We'll do lots of streams. Do like a final result. I'll keep the streams up on YouTube uh, so that y'all can, you know, reference them. We'll just pick days where we could have a fun, chill day. Lots of building. We could start doing some building here uh, today. You missed a bit? Yeah, we were just scoping out some locations. I think we've narrowed it down to this location for some hobbit houses. Up on these hills over here. Really enjoyed the Windows Guide. Awesome. So glad to hear that. How often do I stream? It kind of depends. I don't have a set schedule. Uh, sometimes I'll do multiple times a week. Sometimes it'll be, you know, once every couple weeks. Uh, like the last time I streamed was a, a couple weeks ago. Because uh, I've been doing the big video series of the playthrough. But uh, but yeah, if we're starting these builds, I'll be streaming a bit more, that's for sure. And uh, let's see. I already looked at the location above the base. Little, uh, little to the right, the first tower, a mountain with a 360 view. Yeah, there's lots of uh, lots of great views from up here. And yeah, on the map, another map location. Right over here, I guess Lush Pastures would be the best marker. Lush Pastures is this little village right down the cliff here. And, uh, yeah, we even have, like, a sunset view over here off to the side if we did a Hobbit House over here. Yeah, this is a cool spot, actually. It's right down from the Revelwood Ancient Spire. Um... Yeah, I could try to restore the old tavern, the Blue Goblet Tavern. That's one of the nicest builds I've come across so far of, like, an existing structure. And that could, again, make for a fun build video, renovating the Goblet Tavern, for example, you know, that's apart from, like, these big project live streams. Um, and then, yeah, if you guys like the little tips and stuff like I shared yesterday with the windows, uh, stuff like that, I'd be happy to, um... To keep those going as well when I find out little tips or as I'm building the Hobbit houses if there's a cool little tip that we figure out on stream do a little video for it kind of a thing yeah flip the tavern okay okay three projects the castle Hobbit town and the NPC village yeah more or less and the Hobbit town might be integrated with the NPC village down the cliffside right there because that also seems like a really great spot for that so We'll see, and if not, we'll do the NPC village kind of over on this hill over here. We'll, we'll see. But yeah, I think the Hobbit House will be the main one to start. Just because of the fact that it's so, um... Like, it, it's earlier game materials. I can start it now, kind of a thing, without being done with the game, and it'll give us some fun adventuring for the future as well. Uh, with some simple forest materials. Um, yeah. Love the window tips vid. Awesome, awesome. And the tavern, so that's four projects. Yeah, I, I'm not going to count up the projects. That'll drive me nuts right now. <laughs> so we'll focus on one at a time. Those are like the dreams for the future. Things that I might consider. Lots of things like the tavern, things like the little builds like I did for the forest there. The little forest cabin that I did, the starter house. I'll still keep up on like some of that stuff just because I enjoy the fun builds every now and then. Or concept builds. They give me a lot of inspiration to sort of put toward bigger projects like this. Two hills you can connect through with a bridge. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I could probably rig up something like that up on these cliffs here where I could connect them with a bridge or do a floating island with a bridge off the cliff here. You'll keep track for me? Okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. You can keep keep track of my projects. Building videos made you buy the game? Awesome. Yeah, so happy to see lots of people getting into it. It really has a lot of potential. It's, it's a great one. Yeah, really impressed with the building style and depth in the game. Yeah. 
I've been loving how it's like uniquely different from Valheim, so I really like the building system in Valheim for like sort of endless creativity with like the free placement thing and everything. But then I've been loving this because I loved Minecraft as a kid and, and now having something that's just beautiful graphics with that level of creativity is just amazing. So being able to actually dig hobbit houses in a game. <laughs> Careful not to get any shroud in your altar area. It stopped me from building. Oh, okay. All right, well that's that's good to know. I I'm, I'm guessing then being up in the hill will make sure that doesn't happen because but yeah, down for that village there. I'll be sure to not uh That's a very good point and thank you a ton for that. Uh, because, yeah, if we build a village down there, and then I expand the altar, and then it starts expanding into the shroud, I don't want that to stop me from building. I'll have to do some tests on that, but I, I appreciate that. My opinions on having mounts in the game? Uh, I, I wouldn't have opinions on that, I'd say. I'd say, sure, go for it. I'd be perfectly happy if they added something like that. Um, either way, I love that we can fly with the glider and do all the things, you know, it's like, it's not like I'm longing for a dragon to be able to fly on, so to speak, but, um, but maybe as they expand the map, mounts could be pretty cool. Minecraft with Skyrim graphics? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Alright. So I'm gonna go back to, uh, let's see... My fire over here is lit at my level 1 home. I think I'll go back to this one still. Go ahead and sleep and then start and place a flame altar in the area where we want to do the first hobbit house. That would be fun. Yeah, I've been streaming it looks like for around an hour and a half so far. This has been good. Alright, let me just repair my stuff. I could just sleep there. The thing- the reason I'm going back to here is just to get the rested buff. I also, uh, I also did the skill if I go into my skill tree. I did the skill where I get, uh, let's see, where was it? Endurance, Dexterity, uh, Inner Fires was the Shroud one. One of them where I could gain five minutes of rested time. Uh, I forget where it was. Yeah, I did that one, and having a good rested buff is has been great for stamina, so I can get a 20 minutes rested buff with the house here from all the comfort items I have in it. And then just helps get through the whole day with uh, fast stamina regeneration, especially for things like if we're pickaxing and stuff like that. Um, no way you could uh, chat and play that game, you have to focus. <laughs> yeah, it's a little tough, but it, it's fun for me. I mean, if you guys like me talking through my projects, I could certainly, I can certainly do that. And, uh, I think it's like, yeah, once I kind of get used to the building system here, which I have a feeling I'm pretty much getting there. We can upgrade our flame altar again, or strengthen our flame at some point. We'll get access to more altars so that it doesn't feel so limiting with the, with the, uh, building here, but... Wanted to say hi, enjoying watching the game and all the cool building ideas. Thanks! Welcome, Matthew. Plus 12 at the main base. Yeah, I, I know there's more uh, comfort items that I can do. Like, I could make the wall decoration with a trophy, and I, I think I could get a lot of... a lot more comfort than I have, that's for sure. <laughs> I've kind of just been holding off a little bit, being a little lazy, being all anxious to work on these projects over here. <laughs> Um, okay, so Hobbit House number one. I think the first agenda would be to clear these trees, unless the first Hobbit House goes, like, right here. Um, actually, you know, it could go right here. For Hobbit House number one. Oh, that's true, the comfort in the Blue Goblet Tower would probably be really high. Yeah. Yeah, so Hobbit House number one, coming right on the hill right here. Uh, and I'll build my own little hill coming off of the cliffside here to make the Hobbit House, like, in the in the hill rather than in the cliff. And then it'll back up into the cliff. And then what I'm thinking is, uh, I could continue the hill, like the man-made hill, so to speak, right around this direction. 
and dig another hobbit house right into here that could be slightly smaller than the bigger one right here. And they could connect in within this big rock, so I could have a little passage that goes through here. And then it could come out the side here, right onto the hobbit house that I do right down here. Um... I think that could be... I think that could be good. And yeah, I'll use the foundations to cut into the hill really quick without the pickaxe. Yep. Those are a lot easier, that's for sure. So yeah, I think with that, uh, let me grab the flame altar that's over here. And we'll move it down to there. Have any tips on how you can build something from scratch? Always frustrated with your builds and games, end up copying someone else's build. Honestly, just keep practicing. Think of it- think of it like Legos or something like that if you ever played Legos as a kid. Like, build something, rip it down, build it again, rip it down. Like, don't get- don't get super attached to your builds right off the bat. Just keep doing them. And then you get the practice, you get the imagination, you get, uh, inspiration from build to build. Uh, that you can just sort of carry over. Like, oh, I really liked how I did that on this build. Like, if you guys have watched my Valheim videos, I, uh, I've done Valheim now on this channel pretty much since I started the channel for, you know, year and a half, two years. Doing lots and lots of builds, and I've kind of developed a building style of things I really like that I'll pull from, from certain builds, and then pop them all together, and that's how I sort of create my new builds, uh, to be really practical. But... Move it next to the camp thing. Yeah, yeah, to be able to sleep in there. I think I'll move it over here. I don't think it'll reach this area if it's over there. And doing the first hobbit house right over here. Let's see. Let's go ahead and place it. I'm just gonna go ahead and place it on the edge of the area here. Uh, and then once we get the first hobbit house, like, dug, so to speak, the flame altar can sort of go right in it. Uh, I'll find a spot for the flame altar to permanently be and that's when we can upgrade it to increase the boundary over here. And I think even having it upgraded, I really- I might do a test with the shroud over here. Uh, just- just to see. Yeah, that bug where you can't build if the shroud creeps into the flame altar. That would be a little bit tough here. Um... Getting caught up in the series but wanted to say hi? Welcome! Yeah, glad y'all are enjoying this series. It's been a lot of fun. So yeah, I think for that, now that we we don't need to be up on this hill here, so I'll just I'll go ahead and fast travel. That wasn't too hard to get up to the top of. I just wanted to get up to the top to be able to see the view. Join the Discord as well. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else who wants to join the Discord, I'm usually active over there, chat with each other, share builds and stuff. It's always fun. Um, so yeah, this is a beautiful view, and I'll make a path that goes up here at some point. But I. Uh, I don't need this flame altar here right now. See, so y'all can get one last soak in of the view on the top here. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool if you could share builds at some point with a better blueprint. This is mostly a planning location stream, uh, Dave, but we are starting building right now. <laughs> so you came at the perfect time. Um... Yeah, and then from the from the community, we've uh, we've come to the conclusion that y'all really like the building on stream. So we'll be doing these big forest projects and stuff throughout a lot of streams, uh, and then doing like final build videos after they're done. You have a dedicated server that you're considering upping slot count. Just checking the feeling of this community. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, stream would be nice for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It allows me to just kind of be creative, do my thing. It's hard when I do these big projects to try to concisely <laughs> record like a million clips and put them all together into a video that makes sense. Uh, you know, with smaller projects, it's a lot easier with things like just a single build. But, uh, but this way, we can kind of just see it evolve. And it looks kind of cool. There was a travel sleeping bag. That could be cool. Yeah. So yeah, we have a flame altar here. And I think the boundary of this one should reach... Oh, does it only go to here? That's like tiny right now. 
Um. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to plan this a lot. Uh, I'm gonna have to have, like, two flame altars handy for the building of this so I don't lose progress, because we're gonna need it. Like, I, I have to create the hill over here and get the entryway done. And then, uh... And then be able to dig in here and not lose the progress there. And then somehow place the flame altar in a final location that I'm really happy with so that I can keep upgrading a lot without losing the progress there. So this is gonna be a bit of a, a finicky thing because of the fact that I need to build the hill out first. Which is why I don't want the flame altar going super close, but... How many hours do I have? Um, I have, I think, 45-ish in the early access, and then another 60 from the beta and demo and stuff like that. So, I guess close to 100, not quite. Um, yeah, so with that, I want to have spot for another flame altar here now that that one was extinguished. I want to go down here to the shroud and let's do some testing. Because I don't- I don't like that if I expand the boundary and the- and then the shroud is within the boundary if I can't build anywhere, that would really- that would really suck, but we'll see. Alright. So, I'm gonna go ahead and place the- yeah, so not enough free space. So does that mean that, uh... So yeah, if I place it right by the shroud here, what happens? The shroud is within the boundary of the flame. If I go to building, obviously you can see that the boundary c extends into the shroud. Um, but then... Yeah, if I go over here... Ooh, welcome to the- welcome to the membership, Quantum. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Um, but yeah, you can see that the flame boundary kind of continues all the way into the shroud here. But does that mean I can still build within the rest of this boundary? Does that just mean that I can't build in the shroud? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, it's red right here, but as I... Now it's blue. Now it's blue. It gets red as soon as I'm, like, right here. So I can't place a block within the shroud. But right here, even on the edge of the shroud, I can place blocks. Okay, that clears up the air for that, because I thought, um, like, my misunderstanding with that comment was that you couldn't place anything in the whole flame boundary if some of it was extending into the shroud. So it looks like you can. It looks like it's area-specific, which is really good to know. I was worried about that. <laughs> so that clears the air for that mechanic. Um, can I show the, uh, Farmer Vault? Or Westcott on the map? I think you're close to, uh, close to your location. Yeah, uh, so the farmer vault is, yeah, it's not too far. I think that was, or no, the farmer, there's the farmer vault. Yeah, so you just continue through Revelwood, and it's right over here. So, yep, there's the farmer vault, withered encampment. Yeah, just the enshrouded area, even if you move the shroud. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Okay. At least currently, if you remove the flame altar, building items will stay unless you log out. Yeah, I think that was, uh... Uh, the only thing to watch out for with the new patch that they added today, from my understanding. I haven't read it in full detail yet. But I think it's every 30 minutes now the world will reset itself. So, unless you're in the area. So if you leave your base, uh, for 30 minutes, it will reset if you don't have a flame altar. Uh, regardless of if you log out or not. I think that's what the new patch entails. Uh, just for resource collection and adventure that people were wanting for multiplayer, so I think that's why they added that. But okay, I'm glad that we no longer have to worry about the shroud here. I can go ahead and extinguish this one. It's 30 minutes, yeah, okay, okay. Alright, and let's go back to the one up on the cliff here. Yeah, this is a nice spot for some farming, and possibly an NPC village and stuff. Yeah, there was a pretty pretty hefty patch today, actually. They did quite a bit, and it uh, even added some, like... I don't know if the, I don't know if it updated existing worlds, or if you have to start a new world to get some of the new, like... 
you know, they made just the gameplay and locations a little more, like, playable or something. Like, made the pathing system a little better. I think maybe you get it on the existing world, unless it's in your flame altar. I have no idea how, they, how they're gonna do that with new updates. Does the shroud persist underground if you dig from a non-shroud areas into the shroud? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Uh... I feel like we should try that. We should just get used to some of the mechanics first, because... Yeah. Um... Let's- let's go back down here. I hope you get it in existing worlds. Yeah, that would- that would be really cool. I don't really want to start new worlds all the time either. Because I had to do that a lot in Valheim for, uh, getting the update in an explored area. So I know, like, I'm really hoping that at least new content is added in existing worlds, like, outside that red boundary, and we can still get it in our existing worlds, but I'm not sure if the new content, like what they added in this patch, uh, will be implemented within this area. So I'll let you guys know. Um, but yeah, I'd really hope that it would be in existing worlds. So yeah, if we- if this is the shroud, I really do want to try that, actually. If we dig down... ...on the edge of it... Uh, let's just get, like, a- actually, here, you guys, uh... Uh, here we go. Let's- let's do this. Uh, go here, and go to the terrain block. Okay, so if we go down... On the edge of the shroud, and then we go under it. Oops. Here we go, okay. Uh, we can't build in there, but if I pickaxe, does it still say I'm enshrouded? So I've dug down, if I keep pickaxing straight, because I can't use the building anymore. Yeah, you thought of it while I was talking? Yeah, that's a really good thought, actually. <laughs> Make them work. <laughs> Alright. It- yep, I am enshrouded. So, that's a great question, though. So the shroud does continue into the ground, you can't just dig under it. Good to know. Alright. Let me just fast travel to the altar above and extinguish it again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it would be nice if they added new content to existing worlds. That would be really nice, especially for us builders wanting to spend lots of time into a build. I tend to be a perfectionist when it comes to building, and it'd be nice to... <laughs> nice to sink lots of hours into a hobbit house, depending on the patch. I'm, I'm going to actually look into that later today, probably. Uh, is like, what new locations were or er, no new locations were added, but what was changed with the patch, terrain-wise. And then I'm gonna go to my existing locations in this world and see, did they take effect or did they not? Because if they didn't, that would be a good thing to take note of, of like, maybe I want to start a new world to start this building project just to have like the latest updates for this bigger building project. Since every map is the same, that's what at least is nice, is you can start another world and know exactly where the location is that you want to go to. Ah, uh, which is nice. And thanks for the subs. Nice, the more you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. So that's- that's those mechanics. Um, this is where- this is where the Hobbit House is. That's what I want to do. Um, yeah, with this location. I just think that's an ideal spot for- I love the copper up there. We could even do, like, little cliff jutouts. Little, uh, I don't know, windows within the rock up there above the Hobbit House that kind of comes out of a hill here. Um, release a short with an update on that. That's a good idea. Yeah, Sean, I could try to do that. I could try to do that for y'all. Um... <laughs> Dave, let's build! Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that that's something I'm debating, though, you guys. Like, seriously, with the, with the new update. Did it change existing locations in this world? Because that's kind of... That kind of might be a deal-breaker if we want to start the build right here, right now. Um... Actually, you know what? Let's just- let's just practice at the very least. Uh, I want to see how well can I get a hill coming out of this. Let's just do it. Let's just start building. And, uh, if I have to start again, I start again with that much better practice, uh, depending on what the update is. Um, 
How many altars can you have at one time? Is eight the maximum? Okay. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, too. Um... Yeah, I want the ability to plant the big trees, too. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. And how's it going, Poison Blade? Welcome. Alright. Uh, so yeah. I'm gonna just mine... Let's see, what do I need for this? Do I need... Mostly stone to start out with, which I have a lot of. So we're gonna start with the 4x4 four four terrain block. Alright. Yeah, I'd love to know without having to check too far in the world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll try to I'll try to check on that and see if the locations were added. Just chillin'. Yeah, same here. We're just uh we found a cool spot to start a Hobbit House village. So we're just gonna start messing around with some building here. So I can't build right outside this flame altar area, but like if I okay, I'm just gonna kinda glitch it. Ooh, that was with the dirt. We want it with the stone here. There we go, and then we'll put the dirt on top of it. So can I just sort of cube a hillside that comes out of this? I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, the update was today. Mm -hmm. So if I just kind of stack this, and I know it's not like all the way back to the hill right now, it'll be kind of boxy looking at first. I, I think that'll just be easier. Uh... To, to do it boxy at first, and then we can refine it as we go along. So if I sort of just create myself a bit of a a bit of a platform here, a bit of like a, a building location, we can sort of start snapping into the hill up here. Because yeah, stone is so easy to get. We have so much of it in the world, so I don't really care if I have to redo this if the update did anything or something. So I'm just going to sort of start creating a rounded look to this area. As I would with any hobbit house. We're going to build ourselves the hill that the hobbit house will go into. And then it can continue back into the cliff. Uh, a ways from there as well. So. Ooh yeah, bamboo forest could be really cool. And thanks for the subs. Appreciate it. So there we go. Kind of uh. And we can kind of outline where this hill could come out to. Something... Something like that, maybe. And then start building up more. May as well just keep the inside of it hollow for now, for hollowing it out anyway. Let's see. I think there was also a way where you could, uh, move these blocks, like, farther or closer from you. Someone said you could press shift in the scroll wheel. I'm not finding that to be the case though. It doesn't uh, it doesn't move it around. Shouldn't I upgrade my altar? Right now, I'm just gonna replace it back inside the house. I want to uh, find the final place for it before I upgrade it, just so I'm not putting resources into upgrading it just yet. Uh, if I have to move it, so. Yeah. Oh, Q and the mouse wheel. Oh, amazing! Thank you so much for that. I learned something new every day with this. All the hotkeys are so different from the way they were in the demo. Uh, so I'm so happy that they still have these features, that they're just something, something different. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, a river would be pretty cool. Yeah, water's hard to do with the voxels, but you never know. They may end up putting it in at some point. And yeah, the rake will definitely help me around that. Totally, totally. I'll be using the rake once I, uh, once I get this hill a little more, a little more finished out. Uh, we're just, it'll be chunky right now, but then the rake will be able to smooth all that out, create the, the, uh, shape that we want once we sort of have just some clay blocks. I'm thinking of it like a lump of clay, or like a stone carving. We're just gonna chisel out the shape, chisel chip the shape. <laughs> and then we're gonna take the rake and start, you know, smoothing it, polishing it, refining it. Stuff like that. And this is, yeah, this is probably practice, but we'll end up seeing. I won't do too much building today, like I said. It's, it's, it was mostly a location scouting stream, but it'll be fun to sort of test this area. See what it looks like. Yeah, it does go back to level 1 when you put it out for the flame. Yep. What is my favorite spot for the base location currently? Yeah, I'll do a little update on that, since we probably have some new viewers from the start. 
So right here where I am on the map, starting my Hobbit House Foresty Village here in Revelwood, uh, right down from the Revelwood Ancient Spire. I love this area. So I think we're gonna stick with this spot for a little bit. Uh, and then I also really like the Pillars of Creation uh, in the desert right on the other side. I don't know if we can see them from this side. This hill is blocking them, so we'll have to go around to the other side. I love those, and I'm gonna be doing like a big castle on the top of that. And then, yeah, I like some of the rolling hills in the meadows area, sort of in the middle of the map. Um, there's so there's so many cool spots. And yeah, you can kind of uh, do the water with the luminescent block. That's true. Uh, I don't I don't like when it, there's a lot of it though. Like uh, it's just too too busy in my opinion. So I won't be doing lots of luminescent block water, but I'll be doing like little sections here and there just to make it look kind of neat. I think that could be pretty cool. This is already looking awesome. Just kind of bringing the terrain right out on the sides here. And you can see it's not using up stone like crazy fast. It's using two stone per one of these massive blocks here. <laughs> so it's not expensive to just mess around like this and try it. Heck, if you don't like it right now in this stage, I can just extinguish the flame, log back out, log back in, and boom, I can start again. <laughs> so I just love how chill that is. It feels like a terrain reset where you don't have to feel this pressure around uh, making a mistake with terrain because it's not like Valheim where it's adding instances and making it laggy. Not not to uh, not to that big extent anyway. Yeah, you can watch my short for how deep you can dig. I have a short on my channel uh, that I did in the demo. It's it's pretty crazy deep. Uh, and I think it's the same in Early Access, at least in a lot of areas. Alright, this is actually a lot easier than I thought it was to sort of shape a hill here. To build into. Like, this is not bad at all. Ooh, and I love how we can build, like, we can just glitch it into the tree there. If we wanted to keep the tree. I love that. Okay. That's perfect. Am I gonna dig down or raise the rocks up more? That's an- that's a good, like, uh, dig down into the ground here. I might actually kind of have it go down into the rock a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. This game is very trial and error friendly. Yeah, definitely. So many times I placed and then backspaced. Yeah, it's so nice. You can just hit Y and undo things up to five times. That's really nice. Be cool if they made it up to ten times even. But that would probably add some lag to the game, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the Pillars of Creation is a nice spot for a big... I, I'm just thinking, like, I'm gonna go big there when I when I start building. That'd be a really cool spot when I make it to the desert. Oh nice, yeah, I'll have to take a look at that, at that image eddy, but yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a nice, like, once you upgrade the altar to the maximum, it covers a big distance. <laughs> it covers a much bigger distance than what we're dealing with here. We're just doing some testing to see how the terraforming would work to build a hill for a hobbit house to be in. And then I can sort of round the top off a little more. I don't know, let's see. Back it into the hill. Yeah, this is this is so easy with the way it just kind of snaps in with I when I have X turned off and stuff. I can just literally sculpt a hill and it already looks super good even without the rake and stuff. Uh, this is not bad at all. Yeah, I'm thinking a lot bigger than this though for the first Hobbit house. Like I want to bring the hill, I don't know. The the Hobbit house that I did in the demo was tiny. That was just like something I built the whole thing on stream. It was just a concept, and you guys loved it. <laughs> I was like, I was shocked at how many people watched that full, like, two-hour livestream. That was crazy. So we're definitely going to be doing version 2.0 and way beyond. We're going to be having lots of creativity with these, these Hobbit houses with all the new building things I've learned since the demo. Need the rake even less uh, once you start to add dirt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the dirt, uh, the, the grass grows on the dirt blocks, yep. So if I wanted it to be grassy, so like, when I'm done with the stone outline here, 
I'd go to my dirt here, and then I'd start placing that on the top of the hill here, and then you can see it adds the grass. Uh, and then that's how you would, that's how you would deck it out. So I, for now I'm just doing the stone, because it's like, I mean they're both pretty equally easy to get. I could just do everything out of dirt blocks, but I kind of like to mold it out of stone first. And then, uh, and then we'll go in with the dirt later. And maybe even farm soil, flower soil, just make like the top of it beautiful. All full texture and good stuff. Yeah, I do like how the terraforming adds the detail. Kind of merge the environment. Yeah, it's really nice. So yeah, we could go, we could go really big for this one. I don't even, I don't know how, uh, big I'd want to start, but like, I want it to be full on, like, Bilbo's Hobbit house, you know, like a big one. I mean, small. Small in consideration, but like, big enough for me to add really awesome rounded windows, rounded doors. Lots of really nice texture to the front of it. So that's kind of what I'm, uh, that's kind of what I'm envisioning anyway. I'd love it to be, you know, we'll just kind of bring out the outline. And this is something I'm learning already in terraforming, like, let's just go big and then shrink it from there instead of kind of, oops. <laughs> I, I know I'm gonna fall off the cliff at some point, alright. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is like, this comes out about far enough because that feels like a good cozy front yard here, so to speak. Enough room for a path to go along the cliff edge here. Um. But yeah. Make an easy hobbit house. Yeah, yeah. Where do you find the flower blocks? Uh, I think those are at, like, uh, some other farm area. I haven't been to there, there yet. Maybe it's this area, actually, over here. <laughs> to mend old wounds. Uh, yeah, there's still some quests I gotta do to unlock some of the rest of the things, which is why, you know, kind of doing this stream to introduce some of the possibilities. And then we'll do a few more of the episodes and then some streams when we start building this area, but... Yeah, I like this. Enough room for a little bit of a path. And then this hill, you know, once we expand the flame altar kind of a thing, we can just continue, like, meshing this into that rock formation behind it. And then that just lends itself to a whole bunch of space to have a lot of hobbit house behind. Uh, so that it's not just ending at a hill and you don't accidentally dig into the, you know, open air <laughs> right behind the hill, which is what I like about backing it up to a big rock formation like that. Kind of go with fertilizing a space, um, five times character model for ideas of proportions when you build. Or yeah, visually, visualizing a space. Yeah, yeah, totally. Dig down and make it a little more room on the inside. Yeah, I will, I will. The flower blocks work with, like, the grass. Yeah, they're, they're like the grass, just lots of flowers and things. Oh, I love how the shroud, like, uh, creates this glow on the trees down there. So like when you're up at the Hobbit house here, you can see the glow at nighttime on the bottoms of the trees in the forest. That so adds to the vibe. And just even right now with the flame, with the fire and stuff, as I get the lighting right for this place, it's gonna be the most cozy build ever. Okay. <laughs> we all need to go tell the devs that we need round doors. Yeah, you could. Uh, I'm gonna be using roof blocks on the outside of the door to make it round. So that's how I'm gonna work around that. Um, alright, with that said, I might go back to the house. Uh, flower blocks are at Woodguard, okay, yeah, yeah. Where am I on the map? Do another map reference here. We're just down from the Revelwood Ancient Spire here, right near the Lush Pastures area. Elixir well in this area, so kind of central, uh, in this area, and then the desert's like right over here. So I'm gonna go back home and sleep. We can keep... Uh, messing around with that hill there. And then, uh, and then we'll see. We might, uh, wrap up the stream soon. I know you guys want it forever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this stream, like, I get a massive flow of ideas when I, when I go live. And then, uh, and then I'll, like, kind of process it. And then be ready for the next stream with, like, okay, here's everything I figured out. Here's what we're gonna do, like, I'll, I'll give you guys an update on, like, what did the patch do to the world, all this stuff like that. Like, I'm curious to find all that out, so I don't want to, like, go for, like, three more hours doing this build just yet. We'll, we'll do some longer streams at some point, but, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. A carved downward stairway with a bunch of candles on the side rails. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, totally. Join the Discord later when you get home. Yeah. Share builds and discuss in there. It's been so much fun seeing all your inspiration in the share your builds chat and stuff. It's been a fun community. This has been super cool. You love this game? Yeah. It's so amazing. <laughs> I have been pretty hooked on it. Alright, let's get back up here. And keep messing around with the, with the hill. Music is so mesmerizing? Yeah. They did a good job with the music. That's something I think that really makes a game as well. I liked the Valheim music. I liked the music for this. Uh... Yeah, they have their whole soundtrack now that you can buy on Steam. It's like seven or eight bucks. Buy and download the soundtrack. I might have to do that. It's just, it's so good. <laughs> then when I'm working and stuff, I can be in the enshrouded mindset. <laughs> is there a way to know what time it is in the game? Not really, aside from the sun, yeah. I don't know if it's like Valheim, where you could probably build a sundial and uh, tell the time that way. Uh, you, you probably could, if you wanted to. Yeah, the firefly lamps in the Hobbit house? Yeah, totally, totally. Happy about the tin rebalance? Yeah, and the embers and stuff from the new update? Yeah, it's nice that they... It's really nice that they're listening to the community. That's a good sign. Alright, you guys, well, this is... This is my process for terraforming a hill. Uh, for where the where the little house is gonna go So we kind of just we, we do like a lump uh, Bring it out and then sort of start bringing the terrain Like wrapping it around in the front side which just makes it it brings the space in makes it a little more cozy rather than just a arc here and having flat sides here So we kind of just bring the terrain around wrap it around something like that and uh and then again, this hill can go up like a lot higher at the top here, but we're probably ready to start with the dirt at some point soon, too. The sun goes backwards? I don't think so. Does it go backwards? Does it see it? It's setting... No, it's setting in the... It's rising in the west. Is it rising in the west? Well, heck, the world was consumed by the shroud. A lot of things are messed up, okay? <laughs> Maybe the daylight cycle got thrown off. I don't know. <laughs> the arrow crafting grind is tedious. I don't- it's not too bad. I, I usually just go to the locations. I'll like mark a little location that I found a bunch of arrows in a chest and just keep going back there for the arrows and tools and stuff. I find that that works out pretty well. Let's see. Let, we can just kind of right click the terrain block to keep hollowing out our area in here. I mean, yeah, this is definitely a good start. I really like it. Yeah, you played Portal Knights from King Games? Yeah, it's definitely a good studio. And hey, Maria! Maria, how's it going? We've got a bunch of new people in the chat. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Yep, we're working on a- we're working on a Hobbit build. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be building a base in the desert area. Don't worry, we'll be doing a big castle on the Pillars of Creation. Um, I just want to do a Hobbit House base in the forest instead of in the desert, because I think it fits the environment a little better. Yeah, that's true. You can just grow the, the, the shrubs and stuff with the farmer. You'll be able to get lots of arrows when you unlock that. That's very true. Never come to the lives, good to see you. Yeah! I'm well, glad you made it to this one. Uh, we won't be on too much longer today, but... The community has spoken and we will be live for a lot of the building uh, from now on for these big projects. A lot of you like seeing the process live, so that'll be the... That'll be the plan. Yeah, this is starting to get a little more... A little more the size I want. I, I'd still like, I'd bring it bigger. We have a lot of room to work with. And I just want lots of room to play with to make a beautiful front design. 
you know, to use all the blocks I want, add the texture that I want, stuff like that. A man cave, yeah. <laughs> totally. It's official, you're going to renovate the Blue Goblet Tavern. <laughs> Most likely, I wouldn't say 100% sure for anything yet. But yeah, like like someone said, you guys will keep track of all my projects for me. <laughs> when I'm looking for the next project, you'll be like, Oh, remember? You gotta renovate the Blue Goblet Tavern. Um... Yeah. <laughs> You've never even noticed the sun sets in the wrong direction? Yeah, I haven't really noticed that either until you pointed it out today, and now we're overlooking the west, and I... Yeah, it, it's... that's funny. But, uh... I, I guess there's nothing really wrong with it. It's like I wouldn't notice it unless it was pointed out, but... I suppose it makes the time thing confusing. <laughs> yeah, this is feeling a little more like the size I want the front of it to be. Just really start doing the front outline here, and then we can start cutting back into it a little more. But yeah, this is looking a little better. And yeah, with the size of this, that's another thing I was wondering. Make a floating rock, yeah, I'll totally be doing that. Um, Yeah, with the size, that was something I was wondering of, like, how would it look relative to this giant cliff over here? Like, would it look kind of puny and... And, uh, like, the cliff was, like, overpowering it. But I think as I get this to be a little bigger, uh, it's looking, it's looking proportionally much better here. And it doesn't, doesn't make the cliff look so big anymore. It looks like a, a proper hobbit house here in the front. And then, yeah, I totally think we could bring this hillside around here. Do another little hobbit house in here. Do another one back here. Just, like, a nice little rim of hobbit holes, uh, and then, like, kind of climbing up the cliffside there for our little forest village in this area. I think that would be super cool. Even do like a little windy pathway in between them here that could go into the little hole on the cliff and climb your way up. Yeah, I definitely would love to go deeper into the mountain for sure. That's kind of why I backed it up to this cliffside here. To have a lot of potential to be able to uh, dig all the way back and have a lot of rooms kind of interconnect all the all the hobbit houses, and yeah, the best described way that someone said it was like an ant house, like an ant colony. Uh, <laughs> having them all connected in there. A little maze and stuff in the hill. And yeah, attempt to connect them internally, totally. Man with a vision. <laughs> yep, I'm trying. We're getting all sorts of inspiration now. Alright, I, I love that you can use the cue and the scroll wheel to bring this terrain closer. This is, this is nice. And then yeah, it's not that hard, it looks like, to kind of expand the cliffside over here as well. So, like, we could, uh, you know, if we want a little more room, and then I could kind of put some scaffolding underneath it and feather it into the cliff, just if we wanted a little bit more room for a yard. But, uh, I don't think this is too bad right now. I think it's, I think it's coming along pretty well. An inverted vision of the hive from Resident Evil. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. Yeah, so we're already poking through for daylight. I gotta build that roof up a lot higher here. But... Yeah, anyway, you guys kind of get the idea of... of what I'm going for here when I say a little... little hobbit house village in this area. Hope they add crystal caves, gems, and geodes. That could be really cool. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the subs. Yeah, a tunnel to each house that would join in like a big hall in the center of the mountain here. That would be really cool. Yeah, so many ideas. This is crazy. <laughs> I love how you can just build around the tree like this. This is so cool. Um, yeah, this is, uh, now that you guys are kind of seeing like the shape, seeing the location. Uh, what do you think? Because this is like, you know, before I end the stream, this is last call for, uh, for location and everything. I think I think it's pretty good. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a cool spot. Feels a little tight on the cliff here, but that's not the end of the world. It kind of makes it so that you could have an outdoor fire pit and overlook the forest at night and feel a little more cozy on the high ground here rather than feeling like the hobbit house is uh 
kind of buried in the ground down below the cliff so that you feel like you have a nice little vantage point. I don't know. You love the place, think it's going to be awesome. A dwarf fortress meets and shrouded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I won't forget to do a chimney out the top. Yeah, that was something a lot of people were saying on the demo one that I did. I didn't really have time to finish that one. And, uh, but yeah, I'll definitely do a little chimney so it doesn't feel like, you know, there's no area for the smoke to escape. Even though there's not really smoke mechanics, but, uh, but yeah, it would look really nice to have chimneys on them for sure. Um. Good that the tree doesn't kill you like in Valheim. Yeah, if you cut down these big trees and they fell on you, that'd probably be crazy. Although that adds something fun to Valheim. I like that Valheim has that and the fact that the two games are really different. And yeah, totally. I think crops do grow indoors. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I think they do. And that would be amazing to do inside the Hobbit house to bring some of the outdoors indoors. With some little flower beds, some little, uh, I don't know, grass patches growing inside where the window light comes in. I don't know. But that would be really cool. <laughs> don't finish the stream, I know, I know. Yeah, you guys have been so great. This has been fun. Can't wait to see what you end up with. Yeah, this will be, this will be a lot of fun. Yeah, gravity has fun. Yeah, the two games are like, are nice compliments. I always say when people try to compare Valheim to Enshrouded, they are very different games. Very different games that make each one playable, like, on its own, so to speak. Like, I don't feel like Enshrouded is just going to take over Valheim. They just go really nicely together, and that's what I really like about it. Alright, and speaking of which, I should do a Valheim video soon, too, of, uh, I want to try to make a Hobbit house in a troll cave with the first troll cave design that I did. Um, I think I could revamp that and make a better version and turn it into an official, like, Hobbit house in Valheim without mods and stuff. That could be kind of fun to try. You love the competition in the survival genre? Yeah, yeah. Even the aesthetics are very different. Yeah, totally, totally. Nothing gets over Valheim. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always the game everyone compares to. Because, you know, they they kinda they kinda started the whole survival game genre in the way that they did. Um, so it's kind of a big you know, a big one that everything compares to. Yeah, and Shroud is awesome. Shroud is definitely awesome. Yeah, for the flowers indoors, yeah, totally. I do think at least grass and stuff grows inside with the dirt blocks and stuff. So we could totally bring some, uh, bring some nature indoors for sure. Man, this is like working so well without even the pickaxe, without the rake. We haven't refined anything yet. And we're already, uh, already starting off with a really good shape here. And that didn't take us too long. It, it feels like this game, like, it's not too grindy. I really like that about it. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a that's a good way of saying it, Maria. Valheim will always stay in my heart. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like that was the game I started on, spent so many hours on it. You know, I've got like 1,200 hours in Valheim. Such a great game. Uh, but I will say I've been, really been enjoying Enshrouded a lot. Uh, the building's awesome. Yeah, using the rake uh, helped a lot for polishing the hill. Yeah, totally. I'll be doing that a lot uh, here soon. But I think I'll just kind of mesh it back into the hill over here. And, but yeah, once we sort of have like a... A bit of a... Uh, yeah, a bit of an outline here, then I could find an official spot for the flame altar at some point. Just to, uh, or maybe it goes outside, I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll have to do thinking off stream. If you guys have any suggestions of where it could be a cool spot for, like, a central flame altar in the village, I'm almost thinking, like, in the mountain. Like, maybe I should dig back in the center of the mountain, and that's where, like, you know, where that hall could go in the middle of this, uh, this hill back here. And then that could be where the flame altar goes, and then I could just upgrade the heck out of it, and it would expand around the whole perimeter of the mountain here, allowing for the hobbit houses and stuff on the sides. Um. Yeah, the indigo plant is really nice. Yeah, yeah. In the mountain? Okay. Y 
yeah, I'd love to do some some better yeah, get some better blocks and stuff to unlock and stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah. Never seen Valheim. Yeah, it's a it's a fun game. We do some of that on the channel for sure. That's what we started with for a lot. Um make a big hall and put a flame altar there. Yeah. Okay, well that seals that then. We'll try to dig into the side of the mountain here. And uh and then do the flame altar like in the middle of the mountain somewhere. And that's where it can kind of be expanded from. Uh, because when it upgrades, it'll just exponentially get a lot bigger and make building a lot easier here. You won't have to worry about placing flame altars everywhere. <laughs> or just use the bone blocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's 29 different blocks already. Yeah, definitely. Lots of possibilities. Yeah. Totally. Love my builds. Am I planning on building a farmer house? Uh, yeah, I'd love to do... So that's what I was talking about. I'd love to do, like, this Hobbit Village and then right down the hill probably here uh, at the bottom would be a really cool spot for, like, village builds for NPCs. I'd have another flame altar, like, in the middle of the courtyard down there and do a really nice build for each of the NPCs and do a nice farm down there. That'd be really nice. Um, let's see... Yeah, stone block. There, the bone blocks are the best, though. <laughs> I don't know how many times you said bone blocks today, but yeah, they are really cool. They are really cool. We'll have to do like a buried tomb in the middle of the mountain, or something like that. Uh, would be really neat. Use them in your alchemist tower. Nice, nice. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like the Alchemist Tower, it's like everybody's doing an Alchemist Tower, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, that just makes sense. Like, I don't know. It looks really good for a build for the NPC, for the Alchemist. To do a, a tower, or like a wizard's tower design. Alright, I think this outline is really starting to take shape. And then I can just move this flame altar like in here, allow me to dig into the hill and then find an official spot for the flame altar. But uh, yeah, with that said, I hate to wrap it up, but I do have lots of great ideas from today. I'd love to do a test based on the updates that were put out today, just to see how those affected the existing world in any way. And I'll keep you guys posted. I'll maybe do a little short on that or just a community post. So uh, be on the lookout for those. Um, and then, yeah, I'll do some planning. Try to uh, try to figure out like a good a good plan for this village now that we know where it's going to be. And then obviously stay up uh, to date on the episodes. I'll be continuing all those awesome adventures. I know we got all of the NPCs. Um, but with that, I hope you all liked the, uh, are just liking the adventures. You know, I'm trying to put some timestamps in the description so it's easy to follow and stuff. But, uh, we'll keep those up. It was fun chatting. When's the next live stream? Probably very soon. Uh, now that we're, now that we're off to building, you can expect a live stream, you know, every few episodes and stuff. And we'll keep doing Enshrouded for a bit. Uh, for, you know, and then, like, my summer is in the, in the, or my work is in the summer. So I have winters a little more clear for a lot of YouTube stuff, so that's why I've been doing, you know, daily uploads for Enshrouded and stuff. So it'll slow down, but like, in a while. Um, and I'll still try to get videos out and everything. Super fun watching the stream. Heck yeah. Yeah, thank you all for joining. It was such a great community today. And thank you for everyone who subscribed. Thanks, Quantum, for the membership. Um, do be sure to join the Discord server. I've got a link in the description for that. And, uh, see you tomorrow then? Yeah, yeah, we may even be back tomorrow, um, actually, that's a good point. We may do a stream tomorrow, um, and I might call it, like, Finding Secrets or something. Uh, and you all can tell me everything I've missed. <laughs> and we could go back to our old adventures, find secret doors, um, chests, stuff like that, because I get a lot of comments of people saying, oh, you missed this or you missed that. That would be really fun to uh, to do something like that soon, too, related to the uh, playthrough. So, uh, 
Sounds good, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be fun then. I think that could make for a fun live stream. It won't be building, but yeah, sharing some adventures, a, a quick little stream there, just for fun. Um, yeah, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. All right, have a good one, everybody.